It's time for Type 40, your Doctor Who podcast from the Spacebook for the Fandom Podcast Network. With me, Dan Hadley, Birmingham's King of the Geeks, designated driver and uh, arty farty type, <laughs> poised to deliver Doctor Who conversation once again here on our free speaking, big thinking show for everyone. Whatever decade or century you started watching, reading, or listening along to those ongoing adventures of our hero, Doctor Who, we talk about it all on this show. And who knows, there could be a few laughs along the way too. So come and step into our TARDIS and share this journey together here with us in Doctor Who's 60th anniversary year on Type 40. Ah, yeah. More of uh, more of the same brand of nonsense here on Type 40. Welcome back. Uh, back to the drawing board. Not, not quite like that. Back to the drawing and painting board. And as always, I am joined by my, my wingman to share the airwaves again here. It's uh, the one, the only, the original lunatic, Mr. Simon Horton. Well, greetings. It's lovely to be back with you. Um, there is a spoiler in my shot. There is a spoiler somewhere over my shoulder for, for what we're about to talk about. Um, yeah, it's good to be back and it's good to be talking about art because we, you and I, Dan, we, we love our art. Um, we both have, um, yeah. well, along the way, we both got something of an artistic uh, career either behind us or parallel to us or in front of us. And, uh, and, and so it's always good to talk about art. Yeah, Great. and uh, we're both also, uh, what would you call it, Nostal nostalgists? Is that the right uh, phrase Well, if it, it isn't a word, it should be, and it is now, <laughs> um, because I think, yeah, we're definitely nostalgicists, if, if, I mean, if whatever that is. I don't like to think that I, I live in the past, but obviously feeling connected to the things that we've taken in over the years. I feel that it's, uh, just like they say in Doctor Who, really, it's sort of the, you're the sum of your memories, aren't you, in some respects? Well, I, so I think I, I, I think I do very, very happily live in the past. I have to be honest. I don't ever have a problem with it. Um, you know, time is just an illusion. Lunchtime, even more so. And uh, so, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm very happy to live in the past. I, I'm, I'm done with the present. It's horrible. I hate it. It's an awful world we live in these days. Quite happy back there a few years ago. So, thank you very much. I'll keep my nostalgia. Yeah, we're definitely going to indulge that part of us on this show. And we couldn't think of, any, of anyone really more fitting to speak to uh, for the, the top of the bill in this Umbrella series that we've been doing, indulging our mutual love of Who Art and specifically the legacy of the, the Target books. He's one of Britain's most versatile, enigmatic, that's, that's, and uh, vivid of illustrators let's see if he's a master of the art of conversation as well <laughs> it's a thrill to have with us artist and designer jeff cummins welcome to the show <laughs> how are you guys you okay welcome jeff all the best for seeing you are you well i'm okay yeah uh the build-up is a bit uh, frightening <laughs> <laughs> I know you love this kind of stuff. Oh, you're raising the bar already, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're, I was just going to say you're you're very much a kind of. Um, I I think you're a kind of the sort of person that likes to your art to speak for itself rather than you necessarily speak about it. Am I right in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I mean, simple we're going to simple question, simple answer. Well, that's fine. We're going to tease it all out of you, whether you like it or not. You're going to talk about it, so so be prepared for us to tease it out of you. So you can hear they are pestering me about Doctor Who again. You've not long got back from Gallifrey One in LA, have you? Yeah. Uh, no, I have not. Uh, <laughs> recently, yes, yes, I have. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that was like a double negative. It threw me straight away. Uh -huh. Even in though. <laughs> Maybe, are, you, are you still jet lagged? Perhaps is that is that what no, it is? No, not at all. No, I'm always like this. Unfortunately. <laughs> the, uh, so, how the was Gallifrey One then? How was it? it Gallifrey One was great, and it was, um, but it was very surreal because I didn't feel like I was in LA at all. It was just like you know, I got I got on a train, and then got on a plane, and then got on a bus, and got in a hotel, and went down the basement, and. Uh, and uh, did did the gig, and yeah. in reverse came back. You know, it was kind of like, what just happened? So it's I mean, a bit like it, 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 just like a British convention. You just had the massive flight yeah. in the middle of it, kind of things. Yeah. Well, at either end, there seemed to be uh, plenty of you know American guests at, at the show. 
you know, uh, as opposed to it being in America. You know, it was very strange. Uh, I occasionally got out for about 10 minutes and it was nice and warm. Um, but yeah, it was it was good. I, I enjoyed it. And uh, and I met loads of really nice people as well. And, you know, keeping the surreal thing going when I first, there was a couple of them. See that at the back of the bar there, there's, there's like split screens and with sports and stuff on there. And when we arrived quite late, because the plane was delayed for quite a few hours, um, there there was like baseball on the on the screen over the bar. I'm going, yeah, baseball. And I'm going, you're in LA, mate. Oh, okay. So <laughs> so that that was weird. And then the following day, trying to get kind of tuned into this idea of being in L- LA uh, the following evening uh, I turned up at the bar and Man United were on the TV play what's all that about this is not helpful this is not <laughs> this is not grounding me at all you know so is that the first strong. time you've been to, is that the first time you've been to LA it is yeah yeah um, so you know I know what it looks like it's like the inside of a hotel it looks <laughs> like it. I've seen it's, on the TV. It's just all like that. <laughs> but you didn't see ending of LA at all no, by the sound of it. No, I didn't have time to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. So we, you know, as I say, we got in late on on the Wednesday, and uh, on Thursday it was just kind of a few people did head off in different directions, but I was just trying to set up set up my table and and you know my wares and uh, improvise with kind of what we had to work with you know um so yeah i just i just got on got on with it and uh um <laughs> yeah. and went through the motions but so it was silly all... question you you presumably had to take over with you kind of what what did you take over a portfolio or a box or something with with the print uh, yeah, and what have you in to sell prints, box of prints i took over and um uh, uh i didn't even do that um i shipped them out um beforehand so that was quite That's good cool. and it was quite nice that they turned up as well because otherwise that would have been uh, very interesting I, t- I took a handful of things i did a a little drawing of um a jody and um so it could go in the auction and stuff like that so i had a few little bits of, oh and, and i spoke to a few of the um uh gallifrey fans um on facebook before i went yeah. And someone said, "Oh, I hope he brings such and such with him," and it was like something from the Virgin days. And I'm, I'm kind of going, "No, no, I wasn't going to bring that. No." <laughs> so so I, I, I hurriedly printed a few things out and brought them as well. Uh, you yeah, can't was, please all the people all the time, Jeff. Indeed, honestly, it was just kind of stuff I, I would hide. Um, but you know give the people what they want that's well every, every, every there's a fa, there's a fan out there of every single thing that's for sure yeah Even the thing yeah. that you might want to bury in the past somebody's yeah. gonna love it yeah bring a spade there's plenty of them <laughs> down the back garden <laughs> and so, so, and and, go on sorry dan well i was just thinking that's quite a rare sight in itself finding fraser hines in a bar there it's good <laughs> is it really are you being ironic <laughs> <laughs> I might yeah, be. I, so. I might be. Well, I was wondering, what did they have on on tap there for you as a, as a British man overseas? Did they anticipate you being there? And did they have? I wonder if you'd seen this before, Jeff. Have you seen this beer? Did they have this at Gallifrey One? This is Time Lord, well, I, which is you know what? I don't know. I don't know. I I kind of um, I'm a bit of a, a Chardonnay man these days. Oh, uh, oh I see. Hence, hence You're very sophisticated, aren't you? I'm, I'm totally sophisticated. Um, so, so you wouldn't be interested in the fact that this is now in some branches of Weatherspoons? Is it really? <laughs> is it really? Wow. Uh, I wonder whether they've got a, have they got is a license for this? Do you think that do you think the BBC actually know know about this? Have they got a license for that? I wonder. I think it comes with a health warning that says that if you do drink because of the percentage of alcohol in there is four percent, therefore you know that any risk that you may regenerate. After closing time, you know, they it's a disclaimer. I, I don't know, but I did, I did. I wonder if they got that there at Gallifrey. One, if they maybe shipped that over, seems like they didn't. But, but all, but, I don't think they had it at £2.46. <laughs> all, all of the best conventions end up in the bar, don't they, Jeff? Yeah, all was, of the best, yeah. And, and afterwards as well, it was like, you know, um, a late bar downstairs as well. So I kind of, um, I didn't, I didn't suffer any jack lag because I was still on British time, I think, all the while. Um, Slightly, it was great. It was great fun, you know. Really, really got to meet a load of really nice people over there, and uh, and um, you know, we we ended up kind of meeting the following evening, uh, and and just 
expanding that group you know it was it was really good fun yeah that is one of the beauties isn't it of doctor who i mean we talk about this all the time on the show this family but it really doctor who really is a very welcoming family isn't it it's a group of people certainly i mean especially with the artists you artists guys you you kind of all know each other so you're a little family within it within the doctor who family aren't you yeah yeah i guess so yeah we do get thrown together so it's a it's a case of um uh you know it, sooner or later we're gonna we're gonna know everybody and uh, so far we all get on quite well so that's quite nice you know it's a good job otherwise you you, you could all end up rather sticky and unpleasant couldn't it but everybody always seems to get on very well together and it just seems a great family doctor who's a good family yeah, mutual respect mutual admiration and yeah. obviously that common the common interest the shared love of 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 doctor who or involvement sure. with doctor who and but i know that doctor who is just the tip of the iceberg where your career is concerned isn't it jeff and you've had i mean you've worked on so many different projects and you, on, with so many different subjects too from the world of, of pop culture and music and movies and all these different things hopefully we'll touch on some of your favorites throughout this show we're certainly going to touch on Simon, on some of simon's and mine but i was interested to see that um you know bang up to date that uh noel gordon she spoke very highly of your work didn't she yeah the late crossroads actress yeah, yeah she contacted me she uh, wrote me a little letter one time um there it is right there um, oh, I know. yeah i i did a a kind of i mean i, I wasn't big into uh crossroads um, <laughs> at the time when when i first moved down south kind of 1974 uh we didn't even, even have a tv and my dad came down to visit us one time and he was shocked that we didn't have a tv so uh, he he went out and bought one <laughs> so here have this so <laughs> we ended up watching kind of like soaps and stuff whatever was going and we initially started watching crossroads and we thought it was hilarious you know really good and then by week two we were kind of going what's happening next what's going on and you were dragged in you were drawn in yeah and my my initial the very first uh job um professionally i guess um i used to always paint and i've always said this i, I always used to paint my kind of heroes and stuff and my own time and 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 eventually you try to work with them as well um I, um, I was painting Bruce Lee, and I, uh, I think called Kung Fu Monthly came out, and I just sent a, a photo of the painting, and um, Felix Dennis came back and said, um, we want to run it as a poster, and, uh, and that was the kickoff, literally, for me. Uh, so I started doing Bruce Lee and stuff. Anyway, every now and again, he'd come up with, you know, whatever the latest rage was, and it was Crossroads. He had Crossroads Monthly. And um, yeah. asked me to do Noel Gordon, so I did. And I said, "Keep it quiet, though. Keep it quiet." <laughs> well, I've got Noel. Noel wrote you a letter, and I've she got wrote a, quote me a letter yeah. from her, she, and she says, uh, "Dear Mr. Cummins, I'm writing to say how much I admire your drawing of myself. It is really like me, not prettied up as most drawings are. And I know I'm not an easy subject. Yours sincerely, Noel Gordon. Yeah. Lovely thing." Yeah, the the blurry bit was she she I think uh, wanted to buy the original and um, but the way it was worded was confusing to me. But we we did kind of look look at that for a while. Um, it didn't come to anything, but uh, I was I was quite flattered actually. You know that was I quite think nice so too. And, yeah. and it, it was a really nice uh, you know approach. Um, and yeah. You know, I, I look at those paintings now and the Bruce Lee things, and they're so kind of, uh, I don't know, basic, really. I wasn't I wasn't a very good painter, weirdly. I don't know why I went into this business. Um, and well, I, I think we would all disagree on that one, but do carry uh, on. <laughs> I think I tightened up a bit later on, you know, good, pretty much at the beginning of the Doctor Who stuff. I mean, uh, there is a, a Tom Baker I did, again, for Felix Dennis, uh, on, on the back of one of the TV sci-fi magazines. I don't know if you've seen that. Um, and it, you can you can really see the difference, you know. It, it was we interesting may, later, we may have it coming up later on because for the people watching on YouTube, there's going to be a nice slideshow of some of Jeff's greatest hits from both inside and outside of the time-space continuum. I think 
Bruce Lee and Noel Gordon. We're already getting a fair idea of the kind of range, the kind That's of not, subjects. It's, it's it's not often you get Bruce Lee and Noel Gordon mentioned in the same breath. Nah, <laughs> no. Or David this, is going to... this, this one, this one of David Essex. I'm, I'm all right, Jeff, in thinking that this one never actually got used. This was rejected. Yeah, yeah it was. It was it, it, um, the design, the concept was um, an art director that uh, was running the show at that point, and he got, he, he did find this really good shot of David Essex in that kind of two-tone suit thing. Uh, but the whole, the whole plastic heart and the, the, the uh, diagonal stripes and everything, the green legs, all that came from this guy. Um, and I, I painted my heart out, you know, I've, I've really got very tight now. And, and the reason I wanted to do it was because my one of my sisters was in the David Essex fan club and she was mad about him. Um, yeah. I quite like rock on. You know, I quite like our first single and stuff. And, and I, yeah. I did like the first uh, movie he did. The second movie, uh, we, uh, I took my sister with my girlfriend at the time to the filming of the live part of that, the Stardust. Wow. Film. And um, uh, you can see on the movie, you can see my wife uh, in, the, in the crowd looking very unimpressed. Wow. <laughs> And Unfortunately, it in. my sister didn't make it uh, uh, to the to the uh, final screen. Oh. But, but you can spot my wife just looking bored as hell. You know? And they left it in. Incredible. They left it in. <laughs> so that's nice. Um, Can you yeah, so... imagine where else this conversation is going to go, everybody? <laughs> but uh, well, it's, in the bring me back. <laughs> <laughs> We've just going to take a couple of minutes to remind you that if you'd like to do some real time traveling of your own, each and every edition of this show, past, present, and future, is just a tap or two away on the device of your choice, but only if you know precisely where to look. There's a whole continuum's worth of reviews, previews, interviews, geek outs, and deep dives with all our regulars and some pretty awesome guests. We know there's something for every fan over at type40.podbean.com. More about that a little later on. And as always, we'll make contact with that matrix of all knowledge that we call the Fandom Podcast Network for a word about all the other treats for the years on offer from all the other shows in our family over there. Are you impressed? You look impressed, Jeff. Yeah, I'm very impressed, yeah. He's glazed over. <laughs> yes, yeah, so brace yourselves, everybody, because we are going to go. Step up. <laughs> we are going to go. We're going to go back in time. The good news, the easy part for you, Jeff, is most of this will be about you. <laughs> That's a shame, isn't it? Really, <laughs> I, can, <laughs> I can guarantee that you and you and your artwork. So yeah, keep watching. <laughs> Yes, so the, the Doctor has endured as a mysterious, next to unknowable, but benevolent alien being all these decades on the telly. And maybe the distance between us and him is part of the magic. As Simon was saying earlier on, historically, many artists and uh, any kind of creative, really, have often suggested that they're happy for their work to speak for them, whilst they maintain somewhat of a distance but that is probably easier said than done when one's path crosses with that of the Time Lords. As fans, we often insist on seeing more, hearing more, and knowing more. And uh, as a professional artist with a connection to this brand stretching back well over 40 years now, notably on the on those target line of books published, published, <laughs> published by W.H. Allen from the mid-70s all the way through to the to the late 80s. Jeff, you've had such a wide-ranging career, haven't you? Are you often surprised when you look back at the the amount of work that you've done, never mind how, how ranging it is? Um, yeah, I guess. Um, I'm surprised I'm still alive, frankly. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I've had plenty of time to fit it in, I guess. But, yeah, I... I, I I think when I started out, I was like really, really enthusiastic, you know, to to get my work out there, and um, and place it where I I wanted it. As in, uh, I always wanted to do album covers and stuff like that, I, books, magazines, whatever. I wanted it all to be like um, high profile, where people could see it, 
and then I'd get more work. That seems to be the marketing strategy there, you know. Um, Not rocket for, science, is it? But, but it kind of worked. So, um, uh, yeah, so when Doctor Who came along, when it was offered to me, I, I, was, I was really thrilled, you know, because I was, you know, I was there at the start behind the sofa, like all those other terrified kids. You so, know, did you, so, so did you watch Doctor Who as a kid? You watched yeah, Doctor Who? Yeah, yeah, right from the start, yeah. And, uh, you know, the, literally there was a time where, you know, I used to sit with my dad and watch it. And, um, yeah. and he, you know, I'd sit on the sofa with him. And at one point I remember him saying, what are you doing there? And I'd managed to get myself to the back of the sofa. Uh, and I, I can't remember, it might have been the Daleks, I'm really not sure now. Um, but I just looked at him and, and then realised I was behind the sofa, you know. So, you know, that that did someone just didn't just come up with that, you know, it you, was for real. It really happened. It really, yeah, really yeah. happened. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, you know, it, it was terrifying, but, but you know, um, sort of, you, you just had to watch it, you know. Did you, did, so did you start watching with William Hartnell then? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, he was, uh, you know, you always get the who's, who's your doctor, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it was always him, even though he, he did scare me a little bit and reminded me of teachers that I didn't like very much. And, uh, you know, he was quite abrupt and rude and and what have you. But, you know, that was part of his kind of charm in a way, I suppose. But I kind of, when he regenerated, uh, I'm, I, I mean, I missed Patrick Troughton completely and um i confessed to michael his son a few times about this um and said i will catch up you know i will, I will definitely catch up but when he regenerated it was like i was quite young and i'm going hang on this is not this is not the doctor who's this wow. guy is it you know is he the fifth beetle or something i don't know, I don't know what's going on <laughs> uh, so i i dipped out and I, you wow know, missed kind of um most of uh, John Pertwee as well, I think. You know? Wow. I mean, That's amazing to think that you love the programme, but actually the regeneration turned you off and you stopped yeah. watching because well, of yeah, it. I, thought, I, I think, they, you know, it was like he'd gone away. You know? Wow. And so um, I caught sight of Tom Baker later on and uh, just went, hello. He looks he looks pretty good. <laughs> and so and I came back into it there, you know. And um, so as, as luck would have it, uh, he was pretty much the guy Target wanted me to uh, paint at the time as well, because I guess he was the, the current doctor. You'll have to check that, those facts. But yeah, he, he, yeah. So he was the current doctor. So how did that come about? Did you approach Target, or did they approach you then? No, I'd al I'd already um, did. I did a little work with uh, um, his name's going to go away now. Uh, I can't think of his name. Uh, Don Who, who's this? The, the guy Rose. that ran Target at the time. He, yeah, he was the art editor, Dom, and I'd already approached. I think he worked for Sphere Books. I was doing rounds basically. When I when I moved down south, I, I got a little job with a, a graphics uh, marketing agency, and I, I did that for a, like just just to get me in the in the right area. Really, carried on painting my own stuff and started getting a bit of work with Felix Dennis and stuff. So. By 76, I went out on my own. I thought, right, now's a good time. And I just blitzed everywhere, you know, uh, including Sphere Books. And I sent, I sent like, uh, little promotion uh, sheets out with different uh, bits of artwork on there. Dom Rody saw one piece, and he was quite impressed with it. And when he saw it in, in the flesh, uh, it wasn't quite as tight as he's hoped it would be it was it was quite loose but you know I'd, I'd obviously reduced it for the for the shop um so he encouraged me to tighten up and it was him that kind of pushed that side of it you know the kind of more you know get, getting more realistic and stuff which is what i wanted to do you know yeah. that's what i was kind of aiming at uh, i'd already kind of someone had already got me into um weirdly into um norman rockwell you know the american yeah. art yeah, and uh, I just went. I was looking at his, his you know, his uh, figurative work. I just, oh God, it's amazing, you know. So I, I can't just, believe that I'd not noticed that that 
connective tissue between your work now and Rockwell's? Because I just look, thinking about some of the work, I can completely see it now. I feel that I feel I've missed out a, a big chunk of time there, where you were a little boy there watching the earliest Doctor Who's, and then in the mid seventies, sort of getting commissioned to to work on the on the book line. But you were you were born and uh, you were schooled in North Wales, weren't you? But you you ended up in London in the mid seventies. Were you always an artistic child? Oh yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, as far back as I can remember, I was just scribbling voraciously. You know, it was, it was almost like a, like like a I don't know a thing. I can't think of a word that, that uh, wouldn't a whirling dervish like, of the like art. You're of, channel, of, of the like pencil. you're channeling something, maybe that's how. Yeah, I just couldn't honestly. Uh, any, uh, I just needed to draw all the time, and I, I used to scribble on the back of photographs and get into trouble, you know, because I <laughs> pick up a biro and indent the uh, the thing. Uh, there's one. There's a picture of me, like I think I'm five or something, and I've drawn a little, nice little pretty necklace around my neck. That's quite nice. And on the back, I've got a picture of Noddy and Biggie. It's just really, really, you can just about make them out. But there's also a space station as well, which is wow. Odd. So but, what would stimulate your creativity? Would it be the natural world? Would it be stuff that was on the telly yeah, or, or music or stuff? Like TV, comics, you know, radio. I used to listen to radio, uh, but mostly kid, um, TV when I was a kid. And, um, you know, again, it was like trying to emulate my my heroes and stuff you're trying to draw them you know um recently which is really bizarre uh it where where we are now upstairs um this this is the house where i grew up and i moved back here about seven years ago um my dad used to let us uh draw on the walls um between decorating the bedrooms so he'd strip the paper and he said right you've got the rest of the day so you know <laughs> started scribbling all over the walls and stuff and and we've recently i kind of knew about it because uh my sister found it a while back but uh we literally last year redecorated the bedroom and uh, we found a load of dodgy old pictures of batman and thor and stuff but there was a dalek what and i just thought there it is look at that and uh, that's that's the second time it's been uncovered uh, a man from uncle below it. Man so from uncle, yeah. Or well, whatever was going, you know, whatever was was turning me on. You know, whatever was floating you boat at that moment in time. You yeah. were you you were taking inspiration from all over the place. Yeah, yeah. So that that's my little Dalek blessing. And so that and so that was literally behind the wallpaper yeah. upstairs in the house you you're yeah. in now. And uh, we, you know, when when the book, I, I was trying to promote the book, um, uh, a local. Um, uh, reporter kind of used that and and said it's kind of like prophetic you know it's almost like a you know that scene out of uh uh blink you know yeah. the, with the, the stuff behind the wallpaper and it, yeah, it's quite, yeah. you know and so it's quite nice and I, I, god knows i try to get plug my book on on uh the bbc you know it's like, <laughs> like we found a dalek for goodness sake you know and i became a Doctor Who artist. But, so uh, uh, the, the book you... that you're talking about, Jeff, it's you've not long published yeah. this. It's called The Invisible Artist from Candy Jar Books. That's a really curious title. How did you come up with it? Um, you, I think you kind of mentioned it. I, I, I had this. I already had this idea about um, you know being an illustrator, you know, um, as opposed to an artist, because an artist kind of hangs in the gallery and that's very serious and important. Yeah. Whereas, you know, the likes of me just kind of illustrates stuff. Um, and and it was kind of, I had this, this idea back in the 80s, I think, about doing maybe like a TV thing about promoting this kind of illustration. It was doing quite well at the time. And um, and, and just trying to get it on TV and I, I'd call it the invisible art, you know. but. I kind of that that came away. I didn't do anything with it really. Um, but when it came to do this book, it 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 was what we were talking about earlier, where um, a lot of people uh, tend to know quite quite a bit of my work. They've seen it around, you know, because it's been on the front of magazines and album covers and books and stuff. Um, but they don't always know who it is. And I, and I know you guys. I think I've been surprised that 
they, you've seen something that's not Doctor Who and kind of going, yeah. oh, you did that. Oh, wow. You know, that yeah. kind of thing. So, yeah. it, you know, the artist is invisible in effect. So mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of where I came from. It's, it's not as, as deep as... No. Um, anything really <laughs> it's not no more because there's, there's that. That, well, that big difference isn't there between commercial art and of, uh, the other kind of art isn't yeah. there because commercial art is there to work uh, to sell yeah something even if yeah, it's just I'm, an idea never mind yeah. a product i mean i didn't know what i was going to do my dad said there's something called a commercial artist and i said what does that mean so well you draw for money and I'm going, Oh, <laughs> sounds like a plan, you know, and, and yeah, apparently you go to art school. So there was an art school down the road and off I went, you know. So you went um, to art school in Wales, did you? I did. Yeah. There was a, there was a technical college down the road that had a, an art department attached to it. It was now Wrexham art school. And now it's moved up there. Um, so it's a bigger kind of deal. Uh, but yeah, the, the, so that was it. I kind of, um, and just before, or probably in the first year, I, was, I went there in 1970, um, I was well into my music and um, um, a friend showed me a, a Tyrannos Tyrannosaurus Rex cover um, and uh, all this lovely artwork on it. And I went, oh my God, you know, that was like two of my passions in one right there. So, I, so by the end of art school, you know, I was fully kind of geared up to doing album covers. That's what I wanted to do, you know, and um, and anything besides. But that was the main focus, you know. Having said well, that, I moved down south and I'm a drawing Bruce Lee, you know. <laughs> were your so, family supportive? You know, were your parents completely yeah, behind you? Yeah, yeah. My dad was was pretty good, and I used to always like, you know, I never had a board. I always just used to draw on the floor, you know, sort of like, you know, on my knees with all the stuff all scattered around. Wow. And um, my dad, you know, he used to always kind of give me a crit. Of, uh, I was doing a Bruce Lee thing one time and he said, uh, that hand's too big. That hand out there, it's too big. And I said, yeah, but it's, it's perspective, Dad. I'm doing this kind of exaggerated perspective. It'll be all, when the paint's on it, you'll see, you'll see what I'm trying <laughs> to do. It was kind of like this, this kind of thing going on, you know and uh so um sure enough he came back after his painters go oh yeah and that was wow. it wow so so, so you did so you really cool. did know what you were doing even then i don't know how old you were then but even then you knew what you were doing you knew how to how to frame how to get perspective right i think it was instinctive i mean one mm -hmm. of the uh, one of one of the pictures on the wallpaper uh behind the wallpaper is, is like thor and he's got these tiny little legs and I think it's me trying to do perspective. So his legs yeah. are tiny, like going off in the background. But they weren't. I, yeah. I am going from side to side with tiny little legs. Very strange. But I was, you know, I was very young when I did that. I was nine or ten, I think, when I was doing those. Um, but yeah. And so, and so, did you ever have any thoughts of doing anything else? Did you think, oh, maybe I should be a bank manager or whatever? Or were you always know <laughs> I want to be, a, I want to be an artist, and that's I, it. I never ever thought about it. And I, I, I if, if. For a moment, I thought of what I was going to do once I, uh, you know, left school. I probably thought I was going to end up in a in a factory or something, you know. Uh, only that, you know, art school was mentioned, and then I saw this album cover. I'm trying to think who it. George Underwood. George Underwood. Oh yeah, and he did he, a lot of Bowie stuff, didn't he? Well, he was a, he was in school with Bowie. Mm. He apparently um, thumped him once and gave Correct. him that, that, that eye. Yeah. But he also did some Doctor Who. He did a Doctor yeah, Who. Yeah, he did book, the, di the dinosaur in there. The, di yeah, the, 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 the dinosaurs book. Yeah, and and like like he was he was the one that, that kind of uh, made it happen in my head. Um, uh, there was a guy also, a guy called Quirley at college, and he was he was in the year above me, and he was a fantastic artist. And uh, we all looked up to him because he was just a great character. You know, he's really funny and and mad. And um, he, when he, he left, uh, he came back with some artwork he was working on. Um, um, uh, one piece was something for Marvel, and he was doing some Spider-Man stuff for Marvel. He'd gone off to New York and just wandered in with a portfolio. And then he was doing an album cover for, for somebody else, for Camel, I think the band were called. Um, and it was like, oh my God, this can really happen, you know. 
and he tried to get me some work as well in a studio he was working at in uh, in Liverpool. And but it was um, they gave me a horse to draw, and I'm going really. <laughs> people, I do people, right? You know, like, horse. Okay, so I failed that audition, but um, I, I was good. You know, I, my my sights were on London anyway, so that 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 was always going to happen. Uh, but Quirley, um, his real name, he was always called Quirley. Is a guy called Bob Wakelin, and he's just like he's really well known as doing like comic work and. Uh, uh, Ocean Games. He ended up doing the, the covers for Ocean Games. I remember those. Just absolutely tremendous, you know. Uh, so yeah, um, uh, he 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 and uh, George Underwood were kind of like uh, unwittingly pushing me towards doing all this stuff, you know. And how and how did it feel when you first presumably then your first work actually in print was the painting of Bruce Lee in Kung Fu Monthly. Yeah. How did that feel when you first, saw, when you saw your very first piece of artwork actually out there in the shops, as it were? Thrilling, absolutely thrilling. And uh, uh, Felix had put something in it uh, when they when they advertised the poster initially for the first one with the dragon. It was just a poster, but they put it in in one of the uh, issues to promote it and it said especially painted for kung fu monthly by jeff cummings like like i was some special guy you know? <laughs> Brilliant. and it was like get me you know this is great yeah. so and, and when i got the poster i thought it looks great you know i was really thrilled so um he he didn't even commission the next piece he just sort of said uh if you do anything else let let us see it so it wasn't like <laughs> so he was playing his uh, cards close to his chest, but you know, sure enough, I'm glad to say he really liked the next one. It went on the cover and became another poster. So yeah, I was already starting to get professional work outside of the graphics job I, I was doing. Now the um, adamant thing was um, quite a, a bit later on when I sort of tightened up uh, my act generally and. Uh, and yeah, that got me sued. Unfortunately, it got you sued. How, why were you sued? Can you tell well, us? Um, I, mean, um, I, I can see the artwork here. Can we? Can we all see it? As, as I'm yeah, sure. absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Everyone well, can see. It. Yeah, it was when he did that. Um... Oh, it's gone. <laughs> Oop, Hold on. Go. Bring, bring, where's, where's Adam gone? <laughs> don't, don't worry. Ask the dog. See the dog. <laughs> Sorry, there's Adam. Hey, Shut up. There, the dog, the dog said two back. That's what it was. So. Um, yeah, he just on the um, uh, Prince Charming, and uh, and uh, Felix said uh, the only art, the only uh, reference we've got is an official calendar. So just change it. whatever you use, just change it around. And back in the day, if you just change the pose or whatever, everyone was fine with it. It seemed, you know, but not yeah. this, not this lot. So I, I changed the whole pose. I did this this thing, and uh, I put the little squares in the back because if you remember the video, he's in a yeah, I remember it well. Stuff like that, and otherwise, that was it. And as soon as it hit the street, I was really pleased with it. I even had a plan to uh, approach Adamant with the artwork afterwards and say, you know, do you, do you want to buy it and give me some work, you know, and stuff like that. Um, but uh they got to me first and, and phoned me up and said where did you get the reference and uh and i went uh who are you <laughs> well we represent uh leslie stewart goddard alias adamant and uh you know we're not happy so i said well you, you should be talking to somebody else then so uh they got on to felix and i got a rip the following day you know and it was breach of uh uh, uh for photographic reference, uh, makeup. They apparently had that makeup on an egg somewhere, <laughs> you know, like like uh, clowns. Right. Yeah. And also a bre breach of like video because I put the squares in, suggesting that under the, the dry ice and all. It was a nightmare. And um, anyway, Felix Dennis sort of stepped up and just said, "Look, you can paint whatever you like. I'm I'm the I'm the." Uh, publisher so if i choose to publish it it's my responsibility so he sort of took the heat you know but he years later also uh admitted that he also took the artwork that should have come back to me that mysteriously disappeared when this was all going on and i said what happened to the artwork 
Felix, come on. He said, well, I gave it to you. Uh, Adamant, didn't I? <gasps> You're <laughs> kidding me. So after all that, Adam got it and anyway. Yeah. And I went, you get it. <laughs> I can't believe that. So you got no, into all not. that trouble over it and yet he gave it to Adamant. Yeah. And presumably, as you say, it was Adamant's people that were that were kind of suing you, as it were, for yeah, use of, of the art of, of the makeup. But the makeup was was that was sort of that was what Adamant wore anyway. I mean, I, I, I still can't quite see what the problem was, no, but I, anyway. I, they regist registered it, and, and the guy who did, took the photographs, um, uh, I'm sort of giving the story away here already, but um, in, in my lo in, in, in the street where I lived in Hertfordshire, uh, there was a little pub down the road, yeah. and uh, the guy who owned it was a guy called Alan, and um, we our kids kind of got on a bit. Uh, they used to like the dog in the pub, so they used to come with us to the pub. And, uh, fuss the dog and stuff and he said what kind of stuff do you do and i and i had a like a promotion card with loads of bit, bits and bobs on it album covers and bits and bobs and i gave it him and he went off he lived in the cottage across the road and went off for his lunch and then i it, he told me he was a photographer guess what's coming and uh, he came back and he said this this bit here this this bit you put on here uh this adamant thing I said, oh, don't go there, mate. Oh, it was a terrible nightmare. And I told him the whole story, right? And he went, my photo. <laughs> he, he was, he was uh, Adam Hunt's, you know, uh, personal photographer. As, my life. A guy called... Uh, what are the Al odds? Al Al. He's not around anymore, but he photographed everyone. He was around for years and just an amazing career, you know. And, uh, God, we, you, could, you literally... Came, well, we became huge mates after that. You know, it was, it was great and, and got on for years and stuff. You know, so, God, you yeah. couldn't make it up. But I mean, interestingly, because because <laughs> that's one of my favourite pieces. I, I, I'm a massive Adamant fan, and I'm right. a massive fan of that piece of artwork. Is just exquisite. When when the when the trouble was going on, um, I didn't know he lived in Hertfordshire, but apparently he did. Mm -hmm. um, and I would see him in the street, and I'm going, "Oh my God, is he stalking me? Or what's going on?" <laughs> <laughs> One time I was in London just, just getting a brief from uh, some agency uh, and there's a designer and, and it's like big open plan office and I'm I'm there and I look across the room and Adam Ant's come in. Uh, I think it was Stylo Rouge, you know, used to do. Yeah, uh, I remember Stylo I Rouge, yeah. So, uh, he, was, he was briefing them across the room. I'm going, this is not good. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> did, you not, did you not introduce yourself and say, hi, Adam, I'm, way, I'm the man you sued? I'm, I'm the guy. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, no, I, I told I told that story recently in, in Gallifrey, uh, and I was just sitting in the green room with the, um, uh, David Howe and a few people. Do you know David Howe? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, David David Howe sitting next to me, and I, I'm, um, someone said about the young man thing, and uh, I said, "Oh God, it was a nightmare." And uh, David just nudged me and went like this. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. You're never going to live that one down, are you, Adam? I'm not going to sleep. I'm not going to sleep tonight. You. So, out of interest, though, you presumably Great got the, copy, the copyright managed to get clear because it's in the book, isn't it? It's in the Invisible Artist. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I I try not to worry about that anymore. Yeah. No, quite right. <laughs> too, quite right. And, uh, it was meant to, meant to be. Destiny. It sounds like to me, and particularly you bumping into the the photographer too. That's the kind of story I think. I suppose that the world is full of coincidences and things like that. But particularly in Doctor Who, we hear stories like that all of the time, where people's time streams have collided we're about to head off and collide ourselves now with our friends across the fandom podcast network and specifically our mate kev who's always here to fill your ears with uh, his recommendations for other great geeky conversations going on across all those other shows stay tuned for more with uh, with jeff here simon and myself we'll be back in a couple of minutes for more talk specifically about jeff's work with our one and only our favorite tv show doctor who Thank you for listening. We hope you're enjoying this podcast. Here are the other great shows on the Fandom Podcast Network. 
Culture Clash, where we discuss the latest in entertainment and pop culture. Blood of Kings, our show covering the entire Highlander universe. Couch Potato Theater, we celebrate our favorite movies. And Time Warp, our fandom flashback show discussing a year in movies and our favorite retro movie, TV, and pop culture topics. Good evening, discussing all things Alfred Hitchcock. Hair Metal Podcast, we cover the rock metal music of the 80s and early 90s. Type 40, a Doctor Who podcast, discussing the time-traveling Doctor Who universe. Lethal Mullet, an action film podcast, covering the 80s, 90s, and beyond. Also, check out the Lethal Mullet Network for more great podcasts. What a Piece of Junk, our Star Wars podcast. Making Treks, a Star Trek podcast, with a deep dive into the final frontier. The Fandom Show, our Fandom Podcast Network live YouTube show discussing the hottest topics in fandom. The True Believers MCU podcast, discussing the Marvel Cinematic and Television Universe. Union Federation, our Star Trek and the Orville show. And we're proud to welcome the BQN Network to the Fandom Podcast Network. Please visit our friends on the BQN Network, a Star Trek Universe podcast that also includes your favorite topics, movies, history, superheroes, and more. You can find the Fandom Podcast Network on YouTube. The Fandom Podcast Network is also on all major podcast platforms. The Fandom Podcast Network audio master feed is on Podbean at fpnet.podbean.com. You can find the Fandom Podcast Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can email us at fandompodcastnetwork at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening, so and remember, listening. respect and remember, others, respect enjoy others, your fandom. Enjoy your fandom. Yes, we've teased and tantalized you there, and we can even clothe you too with merch to match all of those shows, including Type 40. Just head over to tpublic.com, search for the Fandom Podcast Network, and that's where you'll find a store full of all the team colors for all of the shows on everything, right the way from phone cases up to T-shirts and to enormous tapestries. Treat yourself, treat your other selves, and it all goes to support the Fandom Podcast Network into the bargain. So everybody wins. Simon and I are still here with Jeff Cummings, the legendary artist and illustrator Jeff Cummings, here talking about his work, not just on Doctor Who, but all those other album covers and posters and everything else that he's done throughout his career. And uh, yeah, he's recently put out this book, The Invisible Artist, showcasing, I would imagine, just a fraction of that. Was it difficult, Jeff, for you to whittle down the, the pieces to go into the book? Not for me, not for me, really. No, I try to put everything to Sean. that I thought was <laughs> worthy uh, in there. Uh, but Sean, the publisher, said, "Hang on, uh, you've taken up too many pages. I'm going to <coughs> hack this back," which he did, and uh, I managed to grab a few things and drag them back in. But um, yeah, we we had to pare it down a little bit. <laughs> but, but am I right in thinking all the Doctor Who stuff is in there? Is that oh, right? All the stuff. I mean, you know, uh, Sean definitely got his way with that one because I'm I'm not a massive fan of my Virgin work. There's one or two I think I'm I got away with, but yeah, I, I wasn't in good shape. Uh, but but, but I mean, but but the Target covers in particular. I mean, you you know that they, they they are they are just stunning. Those 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 I'm, Target I'm covers. Very, I'm very done. proud of them. I I guess. <laughs> more so now you know uh just just because i was i was like really trying to uh uh get that kind of detail going that realism and stuff and um you know uh, i i think I, I used to keep it pretty simple and, and very graphic uh because it was all about the people at the moment it's all about a mutant but you know same difference really i used to try and try yeah. just concentrate on the main character and then yeah well, you just said the word character. It's not just, this is what I've noticed about your work. They're not just monsters, costumes, blokes in suits. I believe that you've got a way of bringing them to life as, as characters, of, of giving them personality and making them seem that bit realer in many respects than they ever did on television. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean that, what, that, that, that what the mutants, this was the first book of yours to be published wasn't it but it was actually the second piece of doctor who art that you did yeah yeah i was i was working really hard um over your shoulder there with the uh talons yeah Simon. that was the first one i did and i was really really trying to get the detail going uh again concentrating on t 
Tom and that ridiculous Cody <laughs> with all that detail. Um, and, and dropping in, this is where I was dropping in this little circle, the kind of Rockwell circle. If you've ever seen any of yes. Rockwell yeah. Saturday evening post things, he would generally have the main characters in the foreground and then just have this kind of circle background yeah. uh, to give it a, a feeling of, of uh, you know, uh, environment or whatever. Um, and that's what I tried to do with this, really, because it did these because I I uh, got got the star fairly tight. It was also kind of labor intensive as well, you know. So yeah. I was trying I was trying to hit these mad deadlines, um, but but get it as well as I could, you know. Get get the detail in there and so on. Jeff, I can't believe but, I've been staring at this piece in particular for all these years for for well over thirty, possibly forty years, and I'd not noticed your Rockwell influence. Rockwell. I feel. Yeah, <laughs> I know but, it's mad, isn't it? It's mad. But I mean, but I mean, this piece in particular, you know, this for me—that's why it's up on my wall. And I've got other prints of yours, Jeff, but this is my absolute favourite. I have to say, you know, this is where you'll have to forgive me because I do go into you know uber geek territory because I absolutely love this piece of artwork. And as a as a ten year old, I just absolutely poured over every last bit of detail. So you say, you know, you were struggling to get, the, well, you, you were fighting to get all the detail you could in there. I can assure you it was, there wasn't a second of your life wasted doing it because <laughs> as a kid, I absolutely loved every tiny bit of detail. In The first time I met you was a few years ago at, um, at a convention and I bored the pants off you going on about the gloves because Tom Baker's gloves in this, you would not believe that those are painted. They look, the, 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 the texture that you've got in those gloves, those are silk gloves. It's like, it's, it is like a photograph. Um, yeah. And I remember just absolutely, you know, obsessing over how you'd managed to achieve with paint to get those gloves to look like real silk gloves. It's just magnificent piece of art. Jeff, if you if you'd never done another piece of art in your life, you can you can yeah you could wear the crown. Of it. When I was ahead, <laughs> it's just beautiful. It's magnificent. Oh, very kind. It's perfect. It's. I mean, I you know I I think I I think I, again looking back had uh, uh, quite a skill at picking the right photos that would work. I mean, because I try to emulate those photographs because I like. Them, you yeah. know, even though I thought, oh my God, I've, I've got my work cut out with this one. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the gloves look good on the photo. You know, so uh, I tried well, to. They... Same with the silk kind of, yeah. uh, uh, you know, jacket in the background there. Yes. Try, just try to, to pull that together as well in the same way, you know. They were usually, usually black and white as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. So I had to kind of introduce the colour. Um, but I. I try not to get hung up with colour. I've never, I've never really been a designer as such, you know. Um, uh, you know, with a palette, um, it's more just about the, the kind of the, the contrast. Yes. Is it easier to work on a subject if you if you love it? If you, if you love that film, love that pop star, love that movie star, or does that come with pressure too? Yeah. No. Uh, well, uh, I pressure I think for oneself. The, the incentive is there to get it to get it. Good, you know, because uh, I mean that's why I always used to kind of target, if you pardon the pun, uh, the people um, I liked, you know. Uh, so that that always did help. But of course, then you feel, uh, you know, there is there is that thing. If you don't get it right, you you've let you've let the whole school down, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, but, but I, th I think I got away with it. I, I think I think you more. <laughs> I, seriously, you more than got away with it. It, 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 it. Honestly, it's one of my favorite pieces of who art of all time. It's magnificent. How was that painted? Was that with gouache? Yeah, yeah, and uh, quite small as well. I, I, I mean, that that would have been no more. Well, less than A four. It'd been uh, kind oh, really? of a little, a little bit off, maybe on the book. But how do you even? I, I literally don't know how you <laughs> manage to paint something with that amount of detail. That's not much. That say about A4 size. How do you get that detail into it? It's too small. Well, I think I think because Don was kind of pushing me to to tighten up. I was working quite small, 
anyway, because it, it, it was like a double-edged sword, you know, it was kind of like, because, because it was labor intensive. Um, I thought, well, if, if I'm going to paint big, I'm going to be here forever. You yeah. Know? So, so let's keep it small. And obviously <laughs> my eyes, my eyes and my, my hand coordination were a lot better than, uh, you know, the, that I keep, mentioning uh blazing saddles these days and saying <laughs> this is me shooting man you know, <laughs> that, that classic scene um but i you know i, I even look back at notes uh, uh uh at the time and calendars diaries and stuff or, or just, and my my writing is tiny wow yeah and and um so yeah i could i could see better than <laughs> and you probably, so, you probably had better useful. patience you probably had better patience i mean how long would a piece like this have taken you to do oh, uh, they, they take uh, uh three weeks four weeks whatever i could get really um and normally i'd have slightly less than that and i just didn't sleep for the the time i was working most of the time you know uh i, I used to try and kind of plan it out and say I need to get this do- this bit done by by this time this bit done by this time and so on and so forth mm-hmm. and, and just give myself a schedule towards the mm-hmm. uh uh deadline and then go over it <laughs> but but I was I was pretty good you know I used to I used to pretty much get it in on time but man the hours I had to put in was like ridiculous and and, and it must have been the same on this cover I mean the detail again on that mutant it is photographic I mean this is where your style is so distinctive because it is like it, it's it's like what they would they would now do today in Photoshop they'd take a photo and mm. they put a few they put a, a few over it, yeah. overdubs on it as it were uh, yeah. and, and and retouch it in fa- in Photoshop and it would look like this but you're doing this completely from scratch with a with a yeah. a, 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 a paintbrush and paint it's yeah incredible. This, this, this was a worry because uh, I don't know what happened with this one uh, i think somebody else was given the job and they weren't happy with it um so uh dom said i need you to do a, a quick one and i'm going don't do that i don't do that <laughs> uh, yes but yes but you know so it was, it was kind of like i i had to kind of i and he and he said this will come out first and i went but yeah, oh, because the other one was finished and i was happy with it so this was going to be my debut oh um, right okay and I'm just thinking, no, you know. But so I concentrated mostly on the main character, and yeah. then the the other elements. I mean, the rock, the rock, and the the wonky Tardis. You know, there's lots of stuff <laughs> going on there that could have been improved. Won- wonky uh, Tardis. Well, I'll tell you what, though, Jeff. There's no danger of uh, of this creature doing an adamant adamant. Is that he's not going to take it to court? <laughs> 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 I'll never be too sure of that one. I would imagine <laughs> yeah. they're not not the most litigious of, uh, of beings. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's then, already uh, got an egghead. So. And so would would Face of Evil have been the next one? Then was that the third cover, Face of Evil? Um, uh, probably. Yeah, I yeah. think it probably <laughs> was. Again, yeah, you've I mean, got the circle, the background here. So just as you yeah. had on the talents of Wang Chiang, sort of bringing the elements together there. And uh, what used to happen, I used to go to this um, BBC building uh, not far from uh, the radio station, um, just off Oxford Street there somewhere. And it, would, it was, they just had a, like a, a couple of drawers in the corner um, and, you know, you'd tell them what, what you're working on and what, what the episode was. And they'd, you'd go through the filing cabinet and open it. There's lots of black and whites relating to that show. And they used to charge us a, a copyright fee to use them. That's why I always kind of um, assert my rights these days about, uh, you know, these artworks are mine. Um, I even paid for the references. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but, but because they did charge me and I was kind of like, uh, you know, uh, not making a lot of money at the time, uh, I used to kind of try and uh, design it there and then, just looking through mm-hmm. the things. So, right, that one's good. I mean, there's a great one of, of Leela sort of thing. And then I, I found that nice one of uh, Tom, the side face thing. It was really nice and sharp. Uh, I could work well with that. Nice contrasty look 
about it. And um, and that's what I do. I, I doubt I, I I wouldn't get too many kind of like maybe this would work as well. I mm-hmm. I try to keep it really tight at that point, you know. And once I've gone, that's it. That's all I've got to work. You've got with. them, and that and that's no it. Question: and, if, you get say, clear, think, if you get a clear vision of what you know yeah. could work, and if it seems like it balances, yeah. then commit to that well, and bring it to life. Uh, and, yes. and in this one in particular, the, the composition on this one is just faultless. You know, as much as I love Talons of Wen Chiang cover, the composition on this one is 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 better simply because it's perfectly balanced. It's just beautiful, mm. um, particularly with the Tom Baker looking in profile, which is an unusual decision to take, but works fantastically. Yeah, yeah I didn't think it was un- unusual particularly, but uh, I just thought that would work great. Um I've heard that. I think Andrew Skeleton even said something about that as well. It was it was kind of like a almost like a brave choice, you know, to do. Well, um, as you can see, I don't do jungle very well. I, <laughs> but I disagree. I didn't, I didn't worry about it too much. It, well, it, it it worked well. It worked. It, it it works beautifully. I think the reason that the, the profile is an unusual choice because I think these days. In particular, you probably struggle to get away with using a profile simply because the the the, the promoters would want the main character to be looking straight like out person. at the person yeah. buying the product. So I think you might struggle to get away with it, um, which is why it's nice to see it because it, I think it is a bold choice and it works so well in this kind of setting because it's all about the composition and the balance of the piece. And I suppose, Simon, at this time as well, around the time this would have come out, Louise Jameson's Leela was yeah. almost approaching that kind of iconic status yeah. as Tom was. She'd made such a huge impact culturally, mm-hmm. hadn't she? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so and so it's good on this one, actually. Leela is is front and centre, as she should be, because the story is is about her. Um it's 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 just a lovely bit. How would you go about doing the, the, the background? So for example, the blue on this and the yellow on the uh, on the talents cover. I actually I actually did paint it real time. Wow, um, really? Yeah, I, I I think you know there would have been an option to, and they, and they may have played with it. I'm I'm really not sure. Um, they may have kind of enhanced it, at, you know, at print stage. Um, but I I would I would paint it in um, real time. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Uh, I guess uh, going back to art school days uh, when we were doing kind of hand painted graphics in the good old days before max and uh what have you uh you used to try and get get once you'd mixed up the paint you try and get it as flat as you could you know so it came in quite handy that for this i guess yeah um you know but i i didn't i i i, I used to get kind of hung up if it didn't look as flat as i wanted it to but after a while you you know just think like it's a painting don't worry about it. It's <laughs> so right? paint. You can and, see and, paint if you want. It's all right. And have you do you do you still own all of the originals of these Target book covers, or have some of these gone AWOL as well? They've they have gone AWOL. In fact, um, Talons was actually nicked from my portfolio. That I was absolutely gutted. I'm not happy with that. And uh, um, it was it, it I. I'd got myself a new agent, and it was quite quite a good agent, I thought. Um, and I only had a, that was very new that piece of artwork, and it was in my portfolio just so I could show people, you know, that I've got to a certain standard now. And um, and she said, I'm, I'm going to take it and leave it with some people. And I said, Well, I'm a bit worried about that, you know, because we the digital printing wasn't readily available it was uh-huh. a long old process to get stuff printed and it was very expensive and so on you know um so i was a bit nervous about it anyway um they also told me one of the other artists on their on the in their band uh really liked it and i said oh that's nice because i quite like their work as well anyway next thing it, it had disappeared wow and, and i went mad you know but um they kind of said, "Well, what can we do? We're really sorry, you know." And that oh. was the end of that. But I've always, I've always suspected maybe it ended up with this other artist. Wow! But I've never, I've never ever followed through with that because you know I'd, I'd be, uh, you know, you'd be on a hiding to nothing. Let's be it's, honest. It's such a, a signature piece of yours. Uh, but then again, they all are. I mean, looking at the horror of Fangrock 
here the uh, the next title. This one, it, it's such a simple idea. And, and it's it's it just seems like perfection to me. This one, this one, Jeff. Well, I got really lucky with that photo, and you you pr- probably know the photo anyway. Yeah. Uh, but it was a cracking shot of him just looking out with the rope and everything. Um, and I looked around for sort of the stuff. I mean, I I never used to read them, you know. To my shame, I never used to read the books. <laughs> I'm not a great reader. Uh, that probably shows in many ways. Um, no but, shame in that, uh, Jeff. Huh. There's no shame in that. I'm not a big reader either. No, um, you know, we we get by in other ways. Um, <laughs> so, and, and I saw a shot with the um, wearing a bowler hat, and I thought, oh, that'll work. I, I, that'll work. That's, that'll be okay. Get the old lighthouse in there, and we're sorted. Get a bit of mood. We're we're fine. This is good. This is a, a simpler kind of more dramatic kind of. Ideal for me, really. I can just concentrate on Tom. Light and, and shade, well, but Tom Baker absolutely still still unmistakable, still lit. Yeah, and I kind of I I I did a, an interview with Robert Dick recently, and um, and he said, "Is it true you've never even seen the episode?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I haven't. Oh, you, uh, you should do. It's a good one. Oh, it is a good one. But everyone said, you know, everyone to a man has, has said like it really kind of represents. Oh, it does the show, which was great. You know, I keep thinking, well, I got lucky there, didn't I? Um, <laughs> but, and and Robert said, you know, he barely wears the bowler hat. He wears it for a few yeah. seconds or something. I think yeah. he wears it a bit longer than that, but not. You know, I have I have since seen it because he did present me with the episode and say. Uh, be gone and uh, do your research. It's never too late. So I did watch it in the end. But yeah, oh, okay. I, I kind of there. There was a nice moment with this. Uh, we we did a little signing in the, the old stamp shop in in the Strand. And oh, Thomas, I remember that. Peter Davidson and uh, a few others, and um, David Howe was was doing it. He said, "Do you want to come? Do you want to, you know." you can sit next to me and sign some stuff and i went yeah you know so i went along and during a break i uh, plucked up the courage and i gave tom a, a a print of that uh the fang rock thing and he said well, what's this and i said well i'm the artist who, who painted this and you know if you'd like the print you can have it and he went you did this and i thought oh no i'm in Uh-oh. trouble Oh, no. <laughs> and he, he just, another he just, adamant moment yeah yeah here we go here we go but but luckily he, he kind of he, he said it was like his his favorite you know wow he actually says this this is my favorite cover with me with my my face on it wow and, wow that's fantastic and i said well i'm, I'm going to use that yeah i even made some jokes you know like saying i bet you say that to all the boys but i'm having it you know <laughs> Well, you've got the look in his eyes so so yeah. well. The the uh, the ancient it was there in the photo, wasn't it? I guess you know. And I'm, I I try. Well, well, I I think yeah, yeah. I think you can. I think you can be self deprecating, but we can, on the other hand, say no. It it requires a good artist to bring that out, and it does because yeah, it was there in the photo, but it still requires a good artist to actually then translate it to 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 paint and and you know this is just a beautiful piece of work it does capture the the atmosphere and the essence of the story perfectly and again as a kid i just remember just obsessing over this cover it's just yeah, that's lovely. yeah thanks and again it's all in the composition isn't it you know it's with that lighthouse in the background with the beam coming out it, it's it, simple it's, isn't it it's simple but you know i, I like i like to think i could i you know again it's it's an instinctive thing that I thought I think I've I used to be pretty good at you know so it's, it's speaking great. as as a uh, as a uh, when I was a kid I'd go and I would look in branches of W H Smiths if I went on holiday or went to some strange town or whatever and there was a as a branch of W H Smiths that I wouldn't normally go in I'd always insist on going in and see if there was any Doctor Who books that I hadn't found yet yeah. and you know one thing I've noticed looking back I mean I didn't know whose whose covers were whose back then but i think it's interesting now that i do know and i've got all yours here lined up in front of me i i see that these are the ones where from from a distance across the shop floor 
I could clock and see, no, I need that one over there, 20 feet away. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's because there's something emblemic about them. I don't know if the word stark is a, appropriate, but there's there's often only one or two elements. Bold. Bold, bold. bold is maybe a better word because they are very, very bold covers. Um, your, yours are very... I'm like a bold. I'm like bold. <laughs> they are bold. They, as you said, Jeff, they're, they're, they're simple and effective. Uh, and they're very bold. I, I do think that's the right word for them. And, and as I say, they're just so beautifully photographed, uh, uh, painted, as I say, like photos. I remember being really, really intrigued. I'm going to ask you a question now because I've wanted to ask this probably for about 40 years. It's always <laughs> intrigued me about about Tom's cheek there. It almost looks <laughs> like there is there is some text subliminally yeah. written. It looks like a nine or a G maybe. And yeah. I'm sure I'm, I'm imagining it. It's a subliminal. It's 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 not there at all i you know I've, I, again i've heard this before and I, I was just emulating the shadow of his hair wow on his face uh i probably i've probably got, gone a bit heavy with it uh somebody said why has he got 69 on his face and <laughs> i've since you know that's been asked in more recent times and i'm just saying well it's tom baker isn't it <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, brilliant. Yeah. 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 Well, I, well, I'm really not the only one that's noticed it anyway. No, it's not I, just me. Honestly, I, d I did a painting of Pete Townsend one time uh, for a magazine in America and stuff. And um, uh, the, I managed to get some good pictures from his uh, agency, his agent. And, um, 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 and I painted it. I was a big hurry as, as normal. And I painted it, and he's sitting in the chair and stuff. And the the the, the art director, art editor, had a, a a specific kind of concept, so I followed that best I could. And then years later, somebody said, "Well, it was in the portfolio." And they said, "Why has he got odd shoes?" And I went, I looked at it, and went, "Why oh can't he got odd shoes?" <laughs> <laughs> I've literally slavishly. Uh, just like gone, gone yeah. down. Like, right, right, get the head, get the hands. They, they were always the important bits. Sit the other bit can, you know, we can get away with that and stuff. <laughs> and and I, I went back to the, the the original shot that I used, and he was backstage somewhere changing his shoes. So he's got one Doc Martin. Brilliant. And, I, and the other one's just like a broke. And I, at the time, I was so kind of engrossed in, in yeah. the process that I haven't sort of stopped, stopped back and going, Oh yeah. <laughs> no, so uh, there's there's a few things. There's a lot. In fact, there's a lot of stuff that you can find in my work. That's like, well, well, like well, a, a big mistake, you know. And, well, and, well, talking talking of big mistakes that doesn't worry me, but I know bothers a lot of people is the Tomb of the Cybermen cover. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> we can't talk about mistakes and not talk about Tomb of the Cybermen. <laughs> uh, I did put it on my. I did put it on my old website, uh, and I just commented on all the different things and, and all I put on this one I go I know I know <laughs> I know it's the wrong time I, I, uh, again this is a very very bold image though beautiful. isn't it well it's, and yeah you know same same rules apply I guess you mm -hmm. know from my point of view and and when I was down at the BBC photo picture library i.e their little cabinet in the corner um there were a few Cybermen to choose from, including the right Cybermen. Yeah, and I just thought he looked a bit daft, frankly. <laughs> yeah. as as I, I yeah. would agree. I mean, if it makes you feel any better, I never clocked this at the time. It was it was only a few years ago, in fact, when somebody pointed out to me. I was like. I'd never noticed that, that it's the wrong Cyberman. Well, the simple because fact of the matter is that, Simon, that the stories weren't available for any of us to watch. There were no. very few very few pictures in circulation at the but, time. Absolutely. But again, it, it's, it is down to, to artistic interpretation. And you're yeah. right, Jeff. That's just a beautiful piece of art of a, of, of a magnificent Cyberman. That, to me, is what a Cyberman looks like classically. And so in my mind... That's absolutely spot on, and you made an artistic decision. Well, to be fair, Again, Simon, as works. well, if before, I mean, we now know that, that uh, Jeff doesn't read the books. We know, <laughs> but the description, Jerry's description in the book, he would have described a Cyberman, and you think a, a tall, silver being well, with... Uh, Robert Dick, in this recent interview, says, in the book, actually, 
if you, if you want to use this in the future, it doesn't, it's non-specific. There you go. So I'm kind of going, well, that's why I did it. Of course, that's <laughs> why I did it. <laughs> but, you know, I, I mean, I, I put a whole bunch, I, I put like a, a multi-image together one time. I was going to do a convention. I thought about maybe doing it as a print and stuff. And I put in, you know, like uh, if you want to find, find pick any more holes in my work, uh, why not look at Dinosaur Invasion? Where where the uh, the T Rex has has got three fingers, right? But I got that the reference. You know, Spielberg wasn't doing his his stuff back then, so you have to go into a, an encyclopedia and look at illustrations that were in encyclopedias. And I picked, I found one, and it it had three fingers, and there they all are. Look at them. Yeah. Yeah, but it's again, it's a lovely oh, piece of fingers floating around there. Yeah, I it's really a lovely love piece of artwork. One. And yeah, and I remember again as a kid, it's those little details that used to fascinate me as a kid. So being the kind of kid that I was, it was the blood dripping from the jaws of the T-Rex that absolutely set my world on fire. Thank you very much. I liked that. That's, that's Matching that's the good red choice. of the of the Doctor Who logo as well, Simon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was just I was just kind of like I, I so wanted it to look more realistic, you know. I mean uh, I think um uh St. Paul's looked okay. Um, I just wanted it. Maybe, maybe I should have knocked St. Paul's back a bit more. Um, mm. Knocked it out a bit more. You know, I, that's what I do. I just, I just look at I look at all the stuff that could have been better. You know. But you're um, obviously going to do that. And again, if it's any if it's any reassurance whatsoever, right? You know, I, I disagree with you. Put some Paul's doesn't need knocking back anymore. It works beautifully because it is a dinosaur invading London. That's that's the point of it. It's got that smoky feel to it, hasn't it, Simon? That we still yeah. I mean at this point we associate kind of fog and smoke a little with with London, I suppose. And and yeah. of course we've in this story too, there's that contrast, isn't there, between modern day Britain mm -hmm. as was. Mm -hmm. And the, the Jurassic mm -hmm. era, whatever whatever era you want to call it, mm -hmm. with all its sort of primal forces and rocks mm -hmm. and, and whatever else. So it just it just all seems all seems so right. But mm -hmm. this is obviously uh, by this point, Target had started recovering old books and they putting new artwork on on titles that had been out before, sort of uh, new editions. Have you any idea how they would arrive, Jeff, at which titles would receive? new covers how did they choose them were you party to any I, of that i've really no idea um i used to just get a brief and and go with it i think sometimes if there was if there there was no doctor on the cover it was because it wasn't the current doctor i mean mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know you can probably check that yeah i would imagine that. yeah that is correct you are right it wouldn't it would uh, this was released uh still when Tom was the Doctor, I'm pretty mutants, confident. Mutants as well, maybe? Would, would that be? That would Say be again? Uh, mutants, who was the Doctor? Now? Mutants was Tom, absolutely. The Mutants oh, was still oh, okay. Tom Baker. So that okay. wouldn't, your theory would make sense. And I think that is correct. I think Target generally did have that as a sort of an ethos that, yeah, if, if it wasn't the current Doctor, don't necessarily rely on it. But how and did you speaking as the Target audience, you know, that's, I would choose, a lot of the time I would choose which books I was going to buy. As I was saying, I, I would see them from across the shop floor. And a lot of the time I would choose it based on the cover and the bolder yeah. the better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's the say, target audience. That's the second time we've managed to get a target pun in, in the show so far. Hey, so hey. I'm impressed. So you boys have both done it, and I now need to somehow shoehorn a target pun in at some point during the rest of the show. Can I ask you, Jeff, how you felt with, with this, this reprint of the Dinosaur Invasion uh, uh, was the first time you'd done a cover for a reprint, and, of course, you were replacing the cover of Chris Akileos. How did you, how, were you even aware that you were replacing Chris's covers? How did you no, feel? No, not really. I mean, I, I was, I was fairly, you know, and I think it's becoming more and more apparent, apparent. I was fairly ignorant of uh, what was what, really. But there's um, no reason why you shouldn't be. There's no reason why you should have an awareness. No, job, I, mean, I, I did meet Chris uh, early on uh, when I first turned up there at Target, and he, he didn't seem very... Um, you know, he, he seemed quite intense, and um, he didn't—he didn't seem like he particularly wanted to know me. Uh, and I thought, oh, what have I done wrong? Uh, but um, I got to know Chris really well uh, in late years, and we got on really, really well. And um, you know, he, he was basically 
being shoved out, I suppose, back then, you know. And like I was told, like, you know, there was so much work coming in now that we've they've had to get more people in, you know. And um, so other artists were coming in to to deal with the load, which was great because it gave me an opportunity to do my thing. And and that was that. We was Chris and I were supposed to work on a, a calendar. Um, uh, uh, was we were going to do six. The, the plan was we would do six months each. And I've, I, I, I'm, you know, again, I was pretty naive, just going, you know, la 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 la. What's going on now? You know, here we go. Wee! Um, not really looking at the the kind of the grown up stuff really, and the politics of it all. But um, you know, I mentioned it to Chris once. I did. I did Sea Devils and uh, uh, Pyramids of Mars. That was the, the, the first two of the six. Um, but then it was pulled. But I, I imagine, you know, when I mentioned it, to Chris, he, he said, "I don't remember that." Um, but I imagine what happened was they were they were maybe trying to kind of say, you know, trying to get the, these two artists together, you know. And, yeah. and heal a wound that that Chris was probably feeling quite badly, you know, um, and uh, he probably told them to shove it. I imagine. <laughs> so I think... that's probably why it didn't happen. But um, now, like I say, you know, I mean, he, you know, he was. I, I guess he was kind of being shoved a bit. I... Um, I, I think if it makes you feel better, I think it was very much a mutual thing. I, th I think Chris, Chris, um, things had happened at Target, and he had decided to move on right. um, through through his own sort of choice. So although things hadn't, he, I think, he, I, I think things had happened to sort of put him into that position where he was moving on. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it certainly wasn't a case that that other artists were coming in and just kind of. Re replacing him if that sort of makes you feel any better oh. were, were you even kind of a, had you seen his target book covers were you aware oh, I, had. I, I had i mean I, I you know i didn't go out and buy target books because that 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 was a kind of suggestion that i might read something <laughs> <laughs> if it had been an album cover i would have been sitting there listening to it you know if the audio was out at the time i'd be uh grabbing all of them you know um so yeah i got you know um Again, I, I would have seen Chris's work, but I wouldn't have known it inside out, you know. Yeah. Uh, I knew the style very well uh, for, for being him and stuff. And like I say, we, we got on really, really well after after a while. We were constantly be, being shoved together. And I don't know, don't know how he felt about that initially, but, you know, at Capital and uh, uh, London Film and Comic, uh, Tony Lee put us together. And um, we're sitting next to each other and we're chatting and we're getting to know each other. You know, and and so you know, and I keep kind of joking about stuff. And um, at one point, he's got like a huge queue waiting. Uh, so I'm just sitting there on my own. And uh, anyway, they all disperse, and I get go stand alongside him, and I just kind of crouch down. And he says, "What are you doing?" And I said, "I'm living in your shadow as always." <laughs> so he he just looked at me, you know, like sternly, and then that's the very gig right there. And and he punched me in the arm, and then started grinning, you know. And I I I think it was that moment where I sort of cracked him, you know. And he got me, there <laughs> and it was all all right, you know. So after that, we, we, we <laughs> oh, well, that's so, that's that's very nice. That's and that's just such a great photo of the two of you uh, next to each other, you know. And 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 I certainly personally consider you two, you know, the iconic artists of of the Target book covers. Um, and it's just great to see you next to each other there. It's lovely. It's certainly for my for my generation coming on a little a little later. Sorry to rub this in, Simon. Coming on into it a little later than Simon. It was uh, it was the reprint covers that were everywhere. When when I was when I was a kid when I was collecting them and yeah. and this this is what we're talking about bringing together two icons there this one uh, you brought together three icons for for this cover there was another another reprint wasn't it with the new artwork from yourself the three doctors so you you've nailed Tom Baker here you get get to go at all three predecessors all at once yeah yeah that was great I I loved that and again I um that the the most difficult uh reference was patrick troughton um because i wanted him you know looking out 
sideways zone and I couldn't find anything I could use. Uh, okay. So it was a shot. It was a shot from some of the show he was in and, and I just kind of changed the hair basically. So, so it's well, it's um, enemy of the world, isn't it? He's playing. He's playing. He's playing salamander. No idea. Yeah. Um, yeah he's I mean, you, know, every, every, you guys will know all these references, you know, and uh, I'm getting to know them for sure. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, you know, um, I was a, a bigger fan of uh, John's Wurzel Gummidge, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I loved Wurzel Gummidge and yeah, who didn't? <laughs> in him as Doctor Who, kind of going backwards because I ducked it out. You know, it's kind of like, oh, <laughs> that's different. So, you know, um, but like <laughs> everyone, everyone kind of, you know, when, when they come into the show, whatever the doctor is, that's their doctor, isn't it? That's yeah. yeah. How it's to work. yeah, yeah. And like I say, I, I got a, a second chance with Tom Baker and, and I also like uh, David Tennant as well. I thought he did a cracking job as well. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm I'm very open minded now. I kind of I can I can please myself who I like. <laughs> yeah, know. but, but your doctor, but your doctor is William Hartnell. I'm guessing. Yeah. And so oh yeah, get for sure. You know. William here. Yeah, for sure. And and then Tom came uh, and you know almost robbed the title. You know because I thought he was fabulous. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I like him in the flesh as well. I think he's he's great. He's just uh, uh, very characterful, isn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah. We've got another circle at the centre of this one yeah. too, Jeff. I notice. Yeah, um, yeah. It was uh, we 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 at least could uh, use a, a black hole as an excuse for this one. So yeah, uh, it's beautiful. So, Love uh, this. I did feel like there was a bit too much space. And the black hat and the black hair didn't really help. Um, I felt like, you know, I felt I needed to put something in there, but um, mm -hmm. resisted and left it alone. Mm, well, again, I think I think it's simple and bold, and that's what that's what works. And I think the thing is with 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 your work because it is so photographic in its style, and there is so much detail in there. Of what, of what is there is so detailed that actually a simple bold design works well in conjunction with the fine detail i mean this is like I, I guess i'm no artist but i'm guessing this is like sort of fine art in that respect isn't it because it is so finely highly detailed would yeah. you well, would I'll, you... Take, I'll take that as well if you like <laughs> yeah, you take it take it and run with it yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah but um, i mean the, I, I guess you know just just trying to get the kind of uh composition right is mm -hmm. is is important because you know it did it, they were labor intensive and they mm -hmm. uh they needed to work really so did you did you have any that you really really struggled with i mean you mentioned that it was difficult there getting a, a patrick Troughton reference but is there one of the doctor who covers that you really struggled with either the composition or the lightness or that you just felt you never quite got right um target probably not you know aside from uh i wasn't totally happy with my dinosaur and stuff like that that'll be my wife uh, hello jeff's of... wife hello, goodbye person. jeff's wife goodbye person, <laughs> goodbye, person. <laughs> <laughs> very personal wasn't it uh, that's cheryl <laughs> yeah she runs about in the background a lot uh <laughs> saying not Doctor Who again. What's the matter with you? Um, yeah, so I can't remember the. the it question. was it was whether there was anything that you struggled with to get the cover right that you really felt you never quite worked or uh, I you were not happy with. Nothing, nothing pokes out on the uh, on on the target stuff. Definitely mm -hmm. with, with uh, Boji and I had a few problems. So I started mm -hmm. off. It went gradually downhill, I think. Um, unless, unless you've got one in mind. No, <laughs> not, that, not <laughs> at all. It's all, it's all marvelous. It's all, all gleaming and glittering, a bit like the, the dome atop yeah. of the the head of the giant robot here on on the next one. This uh, again, this is another. I'm not going to use the word bold again. I've nicked it from Simon enough as it is. But <laughs> well, I, I wondered if I could get away with that, to be honest, you know, because, um, uh, I, you know, I, ju I just thought that this is the only way I can make this work. 
and uh, I did the sketch. Dom was fine with it, you know, just by that like. I think he looks more like a giant uh, with a close up of his head with the universe, yeah, kind of uh, floating around in the background. You know, that that seemed to work for me, and I'm, I and I was a bit worried about like uh, painting metal with gouache, you know, and not. Uh, airbrush. I, I tried to squirt a bit of airbrush every now and again, but uh, stupidly put gouache in an airbrush, which used to clog up very quickly and spit everywhere. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I kept that to a minimum. But I, th- I, th- yeah, I, th- I think it's I think it's okay. I, I love how the light hits hits the yeah. uh, hits the the robot's head at those it's- three places, but particularly the one in the dead center of his brow. It's as if, uh, I know, it's as if something's connecting, he's coming to life. No, okay, well, again, I'll take that. It's, it's pretentious, I know, but I'm gonna run with it anyway. <laughs> go go with it, keep going. <laughs> it's artwork, you can be pretentious about well, it. Because no, this, I love this it. story has got that kind of, it's got that kind of King Kong feel to it, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's classic yeah. science fiction. It's it's kind of kitsch, uh, Paul, the most pulp fiction, I suppose, Doctor, whoever tried mm-hmm. to be mm-hmm. overtly on screen. And that's why I think this, uh, this suits it so well. It kind of speaks of old Hollywood a little. And I know well, that uh, wasn't your intention, but that's what I take from it. <laughs> but, but also but also the, the, the original design of the robot is so great anyway. Why not just put it front and centre um, and use it in a big close-up like this? Because it's such an unusual design. Do we dare use the word iconic again? Probably, yeah. I think oh, yeah. Deco yeah. almost. I used yeah. to call it the, the giant. Um, I've forgotten the word already. Uh, what's um, ah? Can't think of it. Um, used to used to have those machines and they had records in them. Uh, jukebox. Jukebox. Oh, jukebox. jukebox. Yeah. Giant. I see, jukebox. What, I see what you mean. I, I'd um, never thought of it, but you, yeah, you got a point there actually. Yeah, so it's that kind of same sort of hardware, isn't it? But it's great. To put a lot of music in there somehow, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, no, I wish I wish I had the wit to kind of you know when you come up with like beautiful uh, 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 pretentious stuff, Dan. Uh, as as you what said, can I say uh, that I could follow through with that and say, oh yes, <laughs> uh, that's of course what I have in my mind. And, yeah, and then, yeah, Jeff- and then add to it and and grow it as a, as a as a theme. <laughs> <laughs> I just. We'll just- well, Let's go with it. Yeah, <laughs> you're the artist. It, it's the art speaking for itself, Jeff. That's all I will say. My my favourite reprint of yours is actually um, is the, the Doomsday Weapon um, with the with the, I mean that now 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 that is a piece of artwork. That's just because again you've got your brilliant photographic style, but this this actually is 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 not a million miles away from sort of a, a Chris Achilleos kind of style uh, in that it's got those graphic beams shooting out from behind right. Delgado. What was the, what oh, was the yeah. thing behind this cover? Yeah, I don't, I think I was just trying to kind of, um, there might've been something in the, there might've been something in the synopsis. I can't remember uh, that it was like an explosion of some sort. I'm not sure. No, I don't think it is. I think it's all from your brain, Jeff. I I think just, yeah, it's I all just, from your imagination. <laughs> I, I just think it, it, it kind of helped connect, you know, yeah. the two two kind of characters in the back. Uh, the Roger Delgado picture was really, really dark, mm-hmm. and it was, it, it was hard to pick out. Uh, it was the best one I could find, um, uh, and um, the detail around his eyes was quite difficult to pick out so I, I just tried to kind of emulate the photograph as best I can I've since seen uh uh less contrasty pictures which would have made my life life a lot easier if I'd had that <laughs> uh, version but, but Jeff with the widow's peak and that and the the hawkish features like that and the the black the dead black eyes contrast it, isn't it I, I yeah. used to like contrast I think you know. It's moody. Let's be honest. It's a moody, atmospheric piece, and so it works. Something with softer contrast would have—I don't think—would have been quite as uh, as dramatic as this is, and it is really dramatic. This one. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. It's a good. Yeah, like it. I mean, again, these got the aliens there over either shoulder, and uh, I suppose if you if you're talking about people who could challenge the doctors themselves as as simply being completely iconic just with their look. I, th- I suppose Roger Delgado's master is the only one that really comes mm-hmm. close. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. By this point, I suppose when that book came out as well, Simon, there'd probably only been one master, unless you count the crispy master. So 
Uh, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, I don't think Antonelli would have taken over as a master at that point. Yeah, no, it wouldn't. So you're quite right. This was so the, the idea about master. you know sort of it being doctorless and not being mm-hmm. able to be sort of pinned down any mm-hmm. anywhere in particular. Mm-hmm. Still, mm-hmm. sort of applies, even though the master who, wasn't. Who, who would have been the doctor in that one? Then? John Pertwee was the doctor in that one, but again, it was. I, I, I think it would have been. I think it still would have been Tom Baker. I'd have to look at the release date of that, but I think it was still Tom Baker was the doctor. I'm, at the I'm point pretty sure there release. was at least one that uh, uh, John would have been the doctor, but um, they they wouldn't want him. No, to that. yeah, so that might have been that particular one. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely a John Pertwee story. But as I say, yeah, he was long gone by this point. He'd long left the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think it was Tom at the point that this was released. It might even be Peter Davison, but I think it was Tom. Because yeah, um, it's still got the it, the neon tube logo hasn't come in yet, has it? So that's a pretty strong oh, yeah, indication. Oh, yeah, good point. It was, good point. Yeah, you're pre- right. I mean, uh, speaking of which, they come to uh, – this was your, your final target cover of the of the original run, yeah. wasn't it? This one for the time, Medler. So we're back with, with your big, doctor, with the William Hartnell era. Yeah, there was a, there was a big jump between the two. There was quite quite a bit of time. Um, and I tried, I, I did try and get back into it, you know, with the, um, I mean, I, I ended up, uh, with a friend, uh, we, uh, I hired a monk outfit from a, like a, a film okay. prop wow. company that, that, um, shared my town and, um, got a friend to kind of dress up and try to morph his face back to, uh, uh, who's the guy who played in? Peter Butterworth. Uh, Peter Butterworth. Yeah. yeah, and I couldn't. I didn't. Didn't quite make that happen. Um, Jeff, I've always wondered about this because obviously I'd worked out the. It was certainly from no reference photo that I'd ever seen. Yeah, yeah, no, no. That, as I say, we. I've. Uh, I've got it in my book actually. I, I, if I can pull it up quickly, I might be able to show you the picture. Ooh. Was yeah, this I've simply because really you, could, you, you couldn't get a reference photo of Peter Butterworth in the kind of pose that you wanted? The way I wanted it, no. So, we, I mean, I used to do that with lots of my other work. I used to kind of, um, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Can you? Uh, hang on. Oh, yeah, we got yeah, it. Oh, yeah, 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 we, we can it. see. Yeah, so well, what, what is it looking at? That's my friend John, and obviously that's the actual friend. photograph of of John there in your in your rented monk's outfit. That's it. Brilliant. So, wow. Yeah, I tried to do that. It was kind of like a again a, a Rockwelly thing. He used to get uh, uh, in in the book that this guy yeah. uh, lent me for a year for years. It seemed um, he he'd shoot models and stuff. So so I I was at a point I was doing that when I could. You know, even if we could hire models for certain things, that's how Alex Ross works, isn't it? Sorry, almost that's how Alex Ross works, almost exclusively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure, but uh, um, you know, I, 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 I did try. I mean, I did a lot of lot of um, ads uh, that were based on Rockwell's work. They, um, a German company, uh, got me involved. And those, and we used to have a budget to get models in, you know, to to pose for the things and light them and everything, and that was great. And then the backgrounds, I used to just bang in because I wasn't much interested in the background. Uh, and the background on this one, uh, there's there's a, um, uh, it's, <laughs> uh, it sounds like an excuse, but my friend John was always very keen to be an artist and he used to do graphics and stuff yeah. uh, and i said well why don't you do some of the background then and so i let him do, wow. <laughs> I let him do a bit of the background nobody knew it Fantastic. And, then, and, then I, and then i tried to tidy it up a bit here and there <laughs> um but uh yeah um so it's, there's two artists in this one i was being a bit naughty then i, 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 I was just trying to kind of um you know, did you buy him a pint? Did my, did my friend have a little thing? Or, or did, or did yeah, you, he get you a pint? I am on record. We've done several shows about the Target line of books, haven't we, Simon? And sort of, yeah. we've even at one point we, we dug them. into our own book collection that we and we were picking out which ones we like the best and all this kind of thing. So I'm on record as saying this. I'm not just saying this because you're here, but this is 
one of my, if not my all-time favourite Target cover, uh, from certainly from my my childhood. I just love the drama of it. I love the balance of the colours. The yeah. fact that it's absolutely, the fact that it was an image that I couldn't pin down to having seen anywhere else, because mm-hmm. I now know the story. But the I think the thing that reached out to me the most, and this is long before I even saw the time medal that it's based on, is right. that it does, even keeping it in common in common with your other works in in being very very bold yeah. you've got the the uh the wristwatch there on the yeah. monk which leads us into the story which speaks speaks of the of the contrast there with this character who's of another time who we we don't initially know his origins so it tells part of the story too i just think it's a wonderful sensitive choice well, with the, the 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 watch, with the watch, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, only that it, it was uh, part of the story, and I thought mm-hmm. that that was a nice, you know. Um, I thought maybe it'd be a bit too subtle, and I I put one of my uh, little cross uh, flares in flares yeah. cross flare. That's that's what we'll call them here on in. Um, just just to make sure you didn't miss it, basically. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was quite nice. Like it's I say, the, the background kind of went a bit awry, but um, overall, I mean, I, when I first met Nigel Robinson, I, I actually said, I'm really sorry about that coffee. You know, I, was, I wasn't really on my best behaviour, best form. <laughs> best behaviour. What do you mean? I love it, he said. <laughs> I went, oh, I love oh, it yeah, that's fine then. That's fine. I Just sincerely yeah, do. Jeff, for, se- for several work, Jeff, for several years, I was a I was a commercial artist in house for Cadbury's, and I would call that milk tray purple there, you, the top. Oh right, right. yeah, <laughs> milk tray, yeah. Purple, the chocolate boxes and the golden glow yeah. and everything. But no, sincerely, I've always loved it. It it does lend the story, and I love the story. Don't get me wrong, but as with the best of commercial art, this does give it something else. This yeah. lends it a, a romance, Simon. Yes. It, and it also gives it a layer of gloss that, in all honesty, isn't in the television version. It, it, you're right; it's it's got romance as well. It's it's. I mean, what about you, Jeff? I know that your sort of favourite cover has sort of swung backs and forwards between a couple of your pieces. Do you, at this moment in time, sort of have the one that you would say, yeah, that actually that is my favourite of the Target covers? They kind of float a bit, I think. Um, uh, it's usually uh, a Face of Evil and and uh, Fang Rock, I think. You yeah. know. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I think Fang Rock keeps pushing ahead, but then uh, Face of Evil comes back up. And, I, you know, Three Doctors I was quite happy with, but the, those two, I think the compositions are where I want to, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. they're kind of working for me. And, pe- and people can buy these prints, can't they? I know that you, you I'm not sure whether you've got an online yeah, shop, you can certainly buy I'm them good. at conventions. I am a bit of a tart when it comes to that kind of thing. Um, Nothing but, wrong with that. You know, it, it's it's a nice way of sh- of sharing them, really. And it's it was interesting when uh, we did the show at the uh, Cartoon Museum. Yeah. You know, uh, when it relaunched, um, seeing some of the artwork because I haven't seen the artwork. So I, I succumbed many years ago. I was never going to sell them, you know. But things go up and down uh, in in real life. And uh, with four kids, sometimes you know you need to pay for Christmas, you know. And uh, so I, I did let, let them go, but um, it was really quite interesting, you know. The convention I've been doing kind of you know A4, but mostly a, a, always now a, A3 um, to see some of the artwork in the flesh for, for quite, a, quite a time and be absolutely amazed how small they were. You know, mm-hmm. to the point where I forgot. You know, <laughs> oh my God, how, do, how how on earth did I manage that? You know, so so yeah, I was equally, you know, almost impressed, but but more kind of like bewildered, you know, by by uh, so, how, how I managed to do it. Really. So you don't. So you don't own any of the originals at all anymore, don't you? They've all been. They've all moved on. Yeah, I, I, I know where. Uh, like I, I think I think John has. Uh, uh, um, the time meddler and, and my uh, brother-in-law has mutants. Well, I keep trying to get yeah. back with him because I, I, I very 
this you have a very weak moment <laughs> gave him <laughs> for his birthday, which is very nice of me. And now he just he just kind of says, Well, you know how much it's worth now, don't you? <laughs> and he keeps keeps torturing me with it. He's got all lot of, of his, all his, of your his... works, all of your covers, Jeff, have this extended life, don't they? I know you sell prints yourself, but does it often surprise you? I mean, you know, for example, the, the Talons has now come out as an audio book, and there's yeah. your there's your artwork again, unmistakable. How does it feel when you see the your work continue decades later to be associated with these titles? And it's almost unthinkable, I think, for you know, for, such as BBC's range of audio books. Why wouldn't they use? such a great piece of artwork the yeah. fact that it's still got this appeal it still works as a piece of even if you take if you take a uh, connection from either our childhoods or your career out of the equation the fact that it is still a killer piece of commercial art how does that make you feel no i did i did quite like that they wanted to use it you know and uh, and um you know i just said uh, make sure i get my credit <laughs> with a little c in a in a circle um right right uh, you know, for for a nominal fee, of course, eight p. Of course, um, but yeah, I was I was quite pleased that they were still being used because it, it it was an odd, you know, it was it was a, it, it was a nod. I mean, back it was a nod to Target, really. Uh, but it's it's nice that that it's managed. You know, I mean, we should be giving new artists a chance here, folks, really. Um, but it, it but it is quite nice so that they they still thought. You know, they kind of stood up enough to work on the audios, you know, so that's quite nice, really. I quite like that. Doctor Who stayed with you and, and you've stayed with it, haven't you? You know, you still you still paint the new incarnations of the Doctor. You still seem to... Do you challenge yourself? Do you challenge yourself to, to do this? Or do you see something and think, I'd love to paint that person or that creature? What What do you latch on to now? Yeah, I, I, I still have a go. I mean, like I say, I'm, I, I don't want to go back to the uh, blazing saddles analogy again, uh, but it, it is more difficult for me these days. Um, uh, I, so I, I, I don't do that much other than, uh, I mean, I, I still draw, I still a, a sketch and stuff like that. I mean, I, I, uh, the last the most recent job I had was doing storyboards with a, a company, an animation company and stuff. And I quite enjoyed that because it was like uh, creating a mood rather than uh, a finished piece of art, you know, which mm -hmm. is kind of a bit more challenging, I think. I did that thing for uh, Doctor Who magazine where we replicated yeah. uh, Doctor Who Discovers. And I, when they asked me to do it, I so wanted to do it, but I was terrified, you know, because it, it's just going to, it's not going to be the same. I mean, we we got away with it. I think, you know, it it, it can't. So, what, remind us what was the story behind this then? Because obviously, Doctor Who discovers was a a second parallel line of Target titles, wasn't it? They were yeah. they were bigger, they were taller, weren't they? Like A four in size, mm -hmm. soft back, and and not so many pages. Sort of uh, uh, saddle stitch rather than being any kind of perfect bound book but your your work you contributed covers to three of the original titles didn't you yeah yeah and uh, you know the the idea from my point of view is just to make them you know to give them the same quality as uh the target things you know that, that, that i was now in that realm yeah still yeah. doing circles <laughs> yeah. I, I've, ju I've just noticed yeah i won't stop seeing well, circles I, was, before I was a bit shocked I, the the guy that um they were kind of a factual kind of things, weren't they? Pop, pop, oh, yes. Strange and mysterious creatures. I was given the the, the area to, uh, you know, create the artwork, like a, a good kind of square, but, you know, like the rocket going up the side and, and so on and so forth. And then when I saw the final proofs and just so the, the subtitle plastered over mm -hmm. the area that I was supposed to be, you know, mm -hmm. I was allowed to have, especially with the, the, uh, Loch Ness monster is it's straight across his head, bless him. You know? Yeah. But I, I was really kind of, I'm really frustrated by that, you know. And I, I made some quip. I can't remember who the d designer was, but I made some quip in my, my book about it and said maybe if uh, Doctor Who discovers design came out, <laughs> we might have a better chance. 
you know. Because <laughs> it does. You're, you're quite right. It does have to be say whoever did the whoever did the layouts on these clearly hadn't got a clue what they were doing. Bless them. Well, we had a good ten minutes moan from from Colin Howard, who I know that you know as well oh, yeah. about yeah. about cropping as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, cropping, and and also like uh, when we got into uh, Virgin uh, box, they had like a panel at the top and the panel at the bottom, and it was like, no, this mm-hmm. is. This is terrible, you know. Squashes everything a little. But yeah, yeah, stuff that gets cropped off, you know, that that's very annoying. <laughs> so, but did yeah. Doctor Who magazine approach you about about yeah. putting out this uh, this final yeah. this one? It was cancelled originally, wasn't it? So the pirates' title was going to come out, yeah. and then they decided to to stop the line. Is that right, Simon? Yeah, I think so because I, don't, I just don't think they've been good sellers. And it has to be said, Jeff, your artwork is by far and away the best thing about the books. It's They're the not good books. They're very. No. As a kid, I absolutely yeah. hated them. I only bought them purely for your artwork. Well, I um, think there were going to be there were going to be about twenty odd, I think, and and uh, they, they, you know, p- people just think, what's what's this all? T- yeah. t- you know, and that was that was that. Uh, but they they found this manuscript. Recently, and you know, everyone likes a pirate, even though they used to go around pillaging and raping and <laughs> murdering. But we all love the romance of that, don't we? <laughs> Strange world. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I think um, Marcus uh, at Radio Times contacted me, said, Not sure if we're going to pull this off yet, but would you be up for it? And I said, Yeah, of course, you know, even though I was like, Desperately worried that the art was going to be rubbish, um, but I, I, I think somebody told me it was like David Howe suggested it, you know, um, as as an idea. Um, I might be giving him credit um, there. That's not you, but I'm, I, I'm pretty sure that's how it panned out. You know, he kind of suggested mm-hmm. that would be a great idea to redo it. You know. So, and, it, and, and it is a great piece of artwork. Again, you you know you well, don't need to again, work I, it. I have my reservations, obviously, um, and I'm, I'm with the initial sketch and stuff. I I try to keep keep the detail that I'm now struggling with to mm-hmm. a minimum. I, I hid his scarf behind the, the jacket and and what have you. And then Micah said, "We we need to see the scarf. It is Tom, you know." <laughs> I went, no, no. You know, I've got a side face. Uh, <laughs> so I only have to paint half of his face, for goodness sake. That's not strictly true, but, um, but you know, it, it was a consideration. Well, and you so, get away with it. But, somebody, but you've recently, also... somebody recently said when they saw it and said, um, am, am I being pedantic, but wouldn't his eye be closed? <laughs> and I went, yes. You see, you could have saved yourself a bit of work by closing the eye in that case. Yeah, I could have done that, you know, or, or just have, have him, you know, sleeping with his hat down across his face or something like that. <laughs> but you did recently, you did you did a couple of beautiful pencil sketches, one of John Pertwee and one of Tom Baker. Yeah, I was, I, you know, for me, that, that it was, it was a, again, a, a, a bit of a challenge for me. Uh, someone approached me and said, look, you know, you know if it's a rough sketch, I don't mind. And I said, well, look, if you pay me my rate, I'll, I'll give you a day and see what I can do. And I was, I was surprised I, I did what I did. And uh, good old circle was back yeah. there for yeah. a long time's sake. You know, I, I can claim it now <laughs> beyond <laughs> Rockwell, maybe in Doctor Who world. Um, but so yeah, I was quite happy with that. And then off the back of that, uh, the, the Tom uh, version came up as well. So I was quite pleased, you know. And and um, I mean, they are fantastic likenesses. Again, I mean, you really haven't lost your touch in, in capturing a photographic likeness. They're just yeah, fantastic. I had, to, I, had to, I had to nail my my hands on the board, obviously, to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> what what size out of interest then what size were these pieces of art were these about a4 were they i, d- I did them on an a th- i did them on an a3 pad uh-huh. uh so they're kind of uh they're not massive but um that's a fair bit of work in them then though and you've yeah. done a fantastic job on the scarf there you didn't you didn't scrimp on the detail on the scarf or the hair it is it is a bit sketchier it is a bit sketchier and and and, and i my plan was to be even more sketchier but uh yeah i did i did 
you know, I did get get involved in it. Good yeah. old Tom. I, I was glad Tom was looking back at me. You know, it's it, it's a bit like that. Sometimes I, I try to do another one uh, just for the the convention in in LA, uh, Jody, and I've I've done. Uh, uh, another thing for a convention of Jody with um, you know as an trying to do a yeah that nod to uh, fan work but obviously mm-hmm. I was doing a, a line drawing and uh, just digitizing it yes. in Photoshop and stuff because uh, because it, it was like the only way I'd be able to, to do it in the time and so on and so forth but I didn't think I could you know even though I, I thought I found a nice shot of her not from Doctor Who because um, I didn't have access to the magic cupboard. Um, so I, I just tried to kind of uh, find some some old publicity shot of her and put it together. But, you know, I, I don't think I I pulled it off, really. A few people like it, though, but, you know. Um, it's unmistakably her. Yeah, I, she's not looking back at me. That's, that's the thing. I think that's always the test, isn't it? If they're not looking back at you. You know, it's it's like someone who looks like them, not not them. It could be a sister. You know, Tom's looking back at me there. I think on that one. I, th- I think I think you are uh, just a true artist, Jeff. In that you just are hypercritical of your own work. You see yeah. things obviously that other people don't see, simply because it's your work, and you're going to be hi- hypercritical of it. And I, and in I many ways, that's first. <laughs> <laughs> but in many ways, that's the that's the mark of a good artist because you're able to be critical about your stuff, and that's how you improve as an artist, I guess. Yeah, is it? I guess. Yeah, I, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, um, I'd hate to be deluded. You know, when when you know, if I, I you know, looking back now, I'm, I can, I can be a little less modest than just say, well, that worked. That's as far as it goes usually. But, that was, but, you know, I don't but, kind of. Yeah, I'm great or something, you know. It's but, but, you, but it's always always the stuff that I go, oh, you know, that could have been better. Even if even if I didn't have the time, you know, it could have been better. I should have taken the time or whatever, whatever. Uh, but you know, also but yes, when that's the thing about commercial art compared to fine art, isn't it? You know, anybody who's worked in the commercial art sector will will the say deadline. this. The the deadlines and the the customer is is always right, and I suppose if we don't knock the stuffing out of ourselves, putting this stuff out there, then they will do it sort of for us. That's yeah. that's certainly always been my experience. Yeah, it is. But do you do you, Jeff? At least ha- have you sort of over the years have you sort of received some sort of measure of of how much this stuff is loved the the who stuff in particular have you have oh, you yeah. i mean we, you know we well we're still here aren't we and i i do still get asked to go to conventions and stuff so it's quite nice and 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 there is the humbling stuff you know like uh i don't know if you know a guy called steve caldwell who's like a, an amazing artist uh yeah. just amazing portrait artist and he, it, you know, I met him at a, a Doctor Who convention because uh, he did a load of Doctor Who. He liked Doctor Who. Oh, wow, you're great. that stuff's great, you know. Da, 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 da. And um, he he told me it was one of my covers that made him want to be an artist. I mean, he hangs at the National Portrait Gallery now, you know. Wow. I, I can't take any credit for that, but I went in and saw one of his pieces in there, and it, and it was like, you know, that's my boy, you know. <laughs> It was lovely. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable work he does, you know. and and you know you and I know right the writers get it, but um, a, a lot a lot of people come up to me and say that was that was my first book, and mm-hmm. it, you know it sometimes they say it was because of the cover, you know. I, I, I have to be honest, you know, I loved reading the Target books, but it was the cover, obviously, that I fell in love with first Same because it's that that you see on the on the shelf of WH Smith's. And, and you know, I just fell in love with, with, with the artwork on these covers. Well, um, I definitely had that when I was a kid, but obviously not with books, but, you know, with, with record com- covers. Yeah. And, stuff. and it was like, you know, if you could, if you could, you had the choice of three, uh, you'd go for the one that, Appeal to you, cover yeah, ones because you haven't heard sure. any of them, yeah. And and you know, I've had that as, with records as well. You know, that um, some people bought some stuff I did for a band called Silverson because they like mm-hmm. the 
covers, you know. Mm-hmm. Which is lovely. Yeah. You know. I wanted to ask you about that because you've got you've got two books out at the moment, haven't you? Both of them with candy yeah. jar books. Uh, I wanted to ask you about this, the art of Silver Sun. Uh, they were a band that were putting out records in the 90s, I believe. Yeah, like, I'd never uh, heard of them. It, it was kind of a uh, Britpop days, 96. That, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. And they were great. They, they, they were far from British sounding. They were kind of like a, they almost sounded like a, an American kind of power pop band, you know. Yeah. And they had these really tight harmonies that were kind of uh, almost Beach Boys, but with thrashy guitars and stuff. Yeah. Or, or like two, three minute uh, gems, you know, beautiful, uh, beautifully crafted uh, songs, you know. A um, guy called uh, James Broad wrote most of the lyrics and the, the, the main songs and stuff, and the, the whole band were great. You, know, you really produced great. several covers for, for them, obviously several works associated with it. Did they approach you or did, or did you get the work just simply by it, usual it, means? It came, it came through Polydor. I mean, I, I, I worked for Polydor in the old days, you know, and um, uh, a new head of design had joined up uh, and she found one of my old postcards that I showed to Alan Bala at that time, that fateful day. Um, <laughs> With a, the uh, adamant thing, um, and she went, "Oh, this this could work." So, and um, she she pulled me in, and I, I said, I, "Before she looked at my portfolio, I said, look, you know, this is old kind of seventies, eighties stuff. You know, I'm, I'm not sure it's going to work." And she and she said, "Let's have a look." And there was a kind of slightly retro pastiche cover I did for a, a, a Jonathan Ross book. Because uh, he was into all these B movies and stuff, and mm-hmm. I kind of like a, I've seen that as well. Uh, I think, and and she said that that would work great with this band. Go go meet James, you know. And I went round to the studio. Thought he was some technician because he was like this clean cut, be spectacled chap, <laughs> you know. And I'm thinking there's going to be some hairy, uh, crazy yeah. guy. <laughs> and uh, and you know, right away we, you know. Uh, he looked at my portfolio and he was into the old uh, vinyl stuff. You know, we, we even shared a few of the same albums and that, you know, so because so he was into some of the old Neil Young, even stuff, people like that. Um, and, uh, and and we just got on really well and started coming up with ideas for, for the covers. And, and the deadlines were as usual, but worse. They were just like terrible, <laughs> really bang these things out. Um, but because the first one that you just showed, um, I, I kind of thought that worked okay. Uh, so for the rest of them, they, you know, uh, they were even even more difficult to, to put out in the time. But we would kind of got to this point where it's kind of a bit retro, so it can look a bit painterly and even, mm-hmm. even, even badly painted to a certain degree. We could get away with it because, you know. It was, That's the style. Of a style, yeah. So and it was great, you know, and and they used to get they didn't get the breaks they deserved. I don't think um, they should have been massive, uh, but Polydor pushed them and pushed them, and this artwork was all over the place. And they they take like full page ads out in like broadsheet melody makers and stuff like that, and the artwork did get a lot of attention, you know. And at some point, uh, I wanted to do a book. Just, just about the artwork and, and the story behind it, and all the sketches and the the, the ideas that came and went, you know. Because um, people love the people who love this band; they loved them big yeah, time. I, I can imagine. Um, and I was, I was kind of working on this thing, and I was going to get in touch with James once I got it to a certain point, and then James got ill and and died, you know, and it, and it was really tragic, and uh, and that, that made it quite difficult for me because I'd already talked to Sean at uh, Candy Jar about it. Uh, so I had to approach his, his wife, you know, and just say, look, you know, uh, I've been working on this for a while. Um, I didn't want her to think I'd like jumping on some bang yeah, like yeah. the inside, you know. And, uh, and, and she didn't get back to me straight away. Uh, well, she actually did, but it went into my spam and I was really freaking out and I got in touch We've with We've all been there, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, and I, I got in touch with Richard, the bass player, and I said, I haven't heard back from Lou, you know, I, th- I think she's I've probably upset her. He said, check your spam. 
and it was, was awesome. and it was all good you know so uh, they were all behind it it was quite nice you know it was nice and, to- and you must be you must be so proud now surely to see your name on two books of your own you've covered you've put covers on so many books for so many people and here you are you've now got two books with your own name right there on the front that must be a great moment for you yeah yeah it, it, it is nice you know and uh, I, i've always you know i've always kind of thought it'd be nice to have a retrospective of some sort mm-hmm. and then when sean you know put out chris's clack yeah. book you know yeah um he contacted me and i said look i haven't got enough doctor who i can't i can't fill a book with doctor who uh um but if you're interested in looking at some of the other stuff so it was a bit of a challenge for him because i think you know initially he was just going to do chris and then he thought well that went down well let's do it another doctor who artist and so on yeah you know? uh so you know and colin came in behind me um so but i kind of bent the rails a little bit you know mm-hmm. by bringing all this other stuff album stuff and you know books and magazines um but it kind of worked i think you know as long as um sean had plenty of doctor who in there he was happy to give it a go and it's it's gone it's gone down okay well also i i i think it works well because it's all genre stuff and at the end of the day you know we're all geeks we're all fans of this yeah. kind of stuff yeah, it's so... interesting how these crossovers go and you know, I'm, I'm constantly surprised you know i mean i when when i was sitting with chris at london film and comic a few years back uh, uh i suddenly realized that he'd done a white snake album yeah. And I said, "Oh my God, we've got something else in common," because I've done a White Snake album too, you know. So I thought I thought that was quite interesting, you know, just that like, little crossover. Yeah. There. So, yeah. You know, yeah. He was, you know, mad about his music and stuff. You know? Yes. So, but of course, you know, you do get pigeonholed, but in a good way, you know. Yeah. Especially when it's something like Doctor Who, you know. So that's that's a good pigeonhole to be in. You know? mm-hmm. So both of these books are available. Right now, aren't they from Candy Jar Books, or they can buy them direct from you? Can they at conventions and things? Have you got many events? Yeah, yeah I've, got, I've, I've got. I've just got hold of some uh, hardbacks, so I'm going to take them to a, a few conventions. Um, but generally, it's it's a case of getting them uh, via uh, Candy Jar. Um, uh, just like people want them signed as well, so that's that's become a logistical nightmare. <laughs> so that's why I grabbed some from Sean now, and uh, and they'll have to. Obviously, it's, it's, Jeff, it's the 60th anniversary year of Doctor Who this year. Is yeah. your calendar filling up now with with events? People are asking you to to attend. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a few. I'm doing Capsule again, um, uh, the Sci-Fi Weekender that I did last year. Didn't expect to get a, a call back. You know. The following year because you know they like to have fresh blood but i'm going uh-huh. going to that in a, in a week or two if the snow snow allows us to get there yeah yeah nightmare um yeah i've uh i've got one um uh, yeah there's a there's a few, few coming up hopefully uh london film and comic in the in the uh summer i always like that one that's always good and i'm doing um uh, another one. <laughs> hey, another. God, you, you, you are you. You do have your own website as well, though, don't you? Where people can not just uh, look at your at your work at galleries of your work, but also order order prints and things at jeffcummings.wixsite.com. Yeah, Straight yeah. Jeff. So jeffcummings.com and hit hit the old uh, yeah. link. That's the easiest way. And can uh, they get can they get copies of the prints online from you as well, or do they have to turn up in person? Yeah, as a no, I do, I, do, I do them. I haven't got. I've yet to get a, a, a sensible shop on my website. So uh, people just ask me and I, I'll say, yeah, you know, give us your address and use PayPal and I'll post it to you. Bob's your <laughs> uncle. We do it, you know, th- otherwise we do it. At Jeff's your uncle. Do you do Twitter and Facebook and other social medias, yeah. Instagram and things like that? Yeah, I'm still, I'm still a bit slow on it. Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, I'm struggling with a bit because uh you be both mate. Well I I drop yeah, I I drop pictures in and they just come up as blank screens, but people can see them and I'm going, but I can't. What's going on there? I don't understand that. <laughs> so yeah, there's a few I'm I'm like uh struggling with, but I'm trying not to be too kind of uh Luddice about it, you know, trying to get 
get it. No, well, you're very prolific on Facebook. I, I, I see a lot of stuff go up on Facebook of yours. So, yeah, so... I'm, I'm, I'm fairly comfortable there, um, <laughs> I think. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we, we do what we, we can do. Well, I do appreciate I appreciate you spending this time with us this afternoon yeah. talking through your work and your life and your no, career, no. Jeff. I your your uh, how can I put this your self deprecating sense of humour. Yeah, is, I can also uh, I can also see my garden in the back window I'm thinking, God, we need to get working. <laughs> Spring is round the corner, Jeff. Spring is round the corner. Something, isn't it? Always something. <laughs> <laughs> how on earth how how on earth do we follow that? <laughs> Yeah, that's the old girl starting up and calling time on another edition of Type 40, a Doctor Who podcast. I'll be back with another one soon. Look out for that wherever you found this one. It could have been on the dedicated home feed for Type 40 at type40.podbean.com. Could be we rolled up on the podcatcher of your choice. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Play, Amazon Music, Pop, all those places where you can find us on the Podbean app itself so easily use even i can use it we're on youtube the world's largest streaming platform here on the spacebook channel with dedicated video editions of every single podcast now too as well as type 40 live a weekly magazine format show completely raw completely live where anything can happen anything can be said and often is so get on all that you can find it all at type40.podbean.com of course we're still over on the fabulous fandom podcast networks own master feed with all those other shows coming at you never mind weekly there's always something there pretty much on the daily if you'd like to have your say about all of this you can even reach out to us through our social media that's on instagram or twitter and twitter at type 40 doctor who you're feeling really brave of course you could get involved in real time by joining us all for natter over in the type 40 facebook group Jeff was just just talking about Facebook. We're we're uh, prolific on there too. Yeah, there's that's where you can find generations upon regenerations worth of Doctor Who fans talking about the classic series of Doctor Who, reminiscing as we head up to the 60th anniversary, reliving New Who and the the adventures of the 21st century incarnations of the Doctor, and of course looking forward to whatever's coming next in all new Doctor Who with the 14th Doctor David Tennant and the 15th Doctor Shooty Gatwa. Everything's going to change in the next 12 months or so. It's exciting, isn't it, Jeff? I'm excited. Are you excited? Sure is. Yeah, it sure is. Totally. I'm, not, I'm slightly uh, um, curveball here. Um, my wife got back into Coronation Street. We haven't watched that since we were teenagers. <laughs> and uh, and I, I, I was like absolutely entranced by that young uh, actress who's and I thought oh no oh, she's really? leaving oh no she's leaving she's really good and um, she's going to be the new new gal fantastic yeah. I'm I'm really looking forward to that you know see how she does with that I can't think of a name at the moment but um, Billy Gibson yeah she's playing Ruby Sunday they've snapped her up before anybody else could get her oh right yeah yeah well done then fantastic talent she is great so yeah, again, Jeff, just to go over it again, people can find you on Twitter, can't they? And or on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, Twitter, Facebook, that the the safest ones. I mean, it, you Google Jeff Cummings artist, I t- I tend to come up. You can usually find some kind of link from there. Or some guy in California it was I was hoping to bump into and saying, Stop using my name. <laughs> Even though your name is Jeff Cummings. <laughs> There's only one Jeff Cummings. Okay. There's only one Simon yeah. Horton as well, isn't there, Simon? You're also it's on there. Facebook, aren't you? People can find yeah. you in your yep. dedicated group. Yep. I only do Facebook. I can't be bothered with the rest of them. No, that's it. Facebook under the Hoonatics and you'll find me there. I like that. Uh, you can catch up with me on Instagram and Twitter as the Facebook where I'm wheezing and groaning, ranting and raving about all things geeky inside and outside of the TARDIS in movies, TV, comic books, and now and again, the odd bit of real life too. Yes, I do have a real life. It is mostly Doctor Who though. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Yeah, so uh, you can also email us. Yeah, I was forgetting the email, type 40 at gmail.com there for all your email inquiries and anything else you're looking forward to about what's to come in the 60th anniversary year. Thanks again for your company this time, Jeff. It's been it's been a real thrill 
speaking it's been to a you. It's pleasure for me. I'm, I'm hoping it was okay for you guys. It's been honestly, it's been fantastic. We're like two geeky oh. kids, truth be told. Oh. Speaking to one of our heroes, so we're very happy. Thank you, Jeff. You've been a star. Maybe, maybe we'll bump into you at some event or another oh. over the over oh. the 60th anniversary year. Who knows? But yeah, thanks again. We always have the time if you have the space here at Type 40. But that's it for another one. We'll speak to you all again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>